I have liked to have come back and played uh, uh, Bill Tench um, for a couple more seasons? Sure. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, if I ever get that call, um, I'll say yes immediately. Are you ready for this? Another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. Uh, I feel like Fast and the Furious is your is your true therapy, John. It's what makes you happy. It's your happy place. You just saying it kind of made me smile. Yeah, honest. you did. It, it, it's, it's real. And, yeah, and, I, and drawing on the desk. Yeah, and, you're, uh, like, you're like, yeah, like yeah, you know, you're kind of right. Yeah. You're, you're a little bit right there. We're, and we're we're on the verge of. Uh, of we actually fast are. Night. We are like. We got about a month and a half. Yeah, we're getting close. But like that means like we got you got to watch it. Yeah, we got I got to bang out eight fucking movies. Nah, uh, eight. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. If we're not counting the spinoffs, yeah. <laughs> I got to watch <laughs> fucking Calvin and Hobbes or whatever that one's called. Uh, but uh, you know, if if it's been a little bit of a hiatus, I feel like a little bit of a drought, and maybe that's why uh, your mental health has been slipping, John. Maybe that's why you've needed uh, better help to make you. To get you through the drought, to get you from fast eight to fast nine, you call up BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a a, uh, a mental health therapy uh, source that you don't have to be in person. You can just uh, you can do it on uh, on the phone. You can do it over text. You can do it via FaceTime. And I feel like John just pops up and he's like, uh, "Well, the real problem here is that I have not seen Fast and the Furious in about uh, you know two and a half years." Hey, well, we don't know. About, I don't know if I throw a reel in front of it, but it's one of the many. It well, you is. Know what I'd like to call it's that? on the laundry. You know list. what they call that in this world? The trigger. You know, it's not. The, it's not one of your problems, but it's a trigger uh, that you know you haven't had your Dom Toretto and your uh, Ludacris and your drifting and your cars and your family. Oh, uh, this is this is like a good just piece together. Yeah, a hobnob of ad libs for like, <laughs> yeah, mad libs for just mad libs these are the only words that I know about it. Uh, but BetterHelp can get you through. The toughest of times, whether they're actual problems or that you haven't seen a Fast and the Furious movie in a little while. So better help. Actual uh, problems. You said it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm being redundant, aren't I? Uh, since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, no better time here than to get down with better help. Um, better help. It's it's you know, I think people. I, I I think I said this before. Is like if you wait till you're like horribly out of shape, injured, and fat to go to the gym, it's a little too late. So why wait to get some help when you, uh, you know, why wait till you have your mental breakdown or why wait till you're in a really bad spot? Even if you're healthy and happy, why don't you do a little maintenance work and keep it that way? So whether you're happy, sad, doing well, struggling, better help is good for you uh, to make sure that everything going on between the ears is healthy. And like I said, you don't have to uh, go anywhere. You don't have to meet with anybody. You don't have to have any awkward doctor visits. You can do it over the phone. You can do it over FaceTime. You can even text if you need some help. Go to BetterHelp.com, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash KFC. Get 10% off your first month of uh, therapy. Uh, and it's it's already much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. And on top of that, 10% discount at BetterHelp.com slash KFC. Uh, you know, like I said, we're we're at the finish line here. We're in the end game for F nine. I I <laughs> I was just <laughs> reading an oral history. I love oral histories. Love a good oral. And uh, <laughs> bing, nailed did that it. like low jump. Um, but um, and uh, it was just like it was a lot of the stars talking about just like twenty years ago because it's the twentieth right. anniversary. It came out in 2000, 2001. and oh, wow, it was. It's actually crazy. I didn't know the whole story behind it. Like, I didn't know it was born of this story. In, was born in it. In this molded <laughs> by it. In Vibe magazine called Racer X. And it actually took place in New York. And it was just a real article about underground street racing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And they called. And then, like, uh, some director got his hands on it. And then, like, they called. He was like, he, oh, he had just done The Skulls with Paul Walker. And he's like, Paul, I want to do this movie with you. And... He was like Paul Paul Walker because there they were also in, in, inserts of an interview with Paul Walker from 2007 mm -hmm. or I'm sorry from Fast Seven from 2000 whatever where like they were just kind of interjecting his comments when they were asking the rest of the cast about similar comments. Okay, so like any, anywhere it fit in, it was just like Paul Walker five years ago, whatever mm -hmm, he said it, mm -hmm. and uh, and um, his agent was like Paul, absolutely not. Are you doing this movie? It was called Red Line to begin with. 
And there's like no chance of you doing this movie. And he's like, dude, like I just get to hang out with cool people and I make a million dollars. Like I'm doing, doing I'm it. just doing this movie. Wow. Just so you know, I'm doing this movie. Yeah. And uh, but there were like a lot of cool review reveals and like a lot of cool like moments in the thing where they were talking about how like when they first filmed it, everyone was a no one. Right. Like Paul Walker had some he had, had skulls. He had yeah, skulls. He, he had, was he a pretty did, boy. He had varsity blues. Yeah. yeah um. Yeah. And it was like he, he was known, but he wasn't no. Like right. He wasn't Paul Walker. He wasn't yeah. like that. Vin Diesel was and just the bald. Vin new Diesel asshole. was like the guy from Saving Private Ryan, very uh-huh. briefly. Mm-hmm. Although they said when they when he met with like the casting director, Vin walked in and they were like, it was just like a spotlight was this on him. Right? Like he yeah, was like yeah, he, he knew he was yeah, a Tom superstar. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it was just like we kind kind of like what we're talking about with Holt, where it's like just waiting for everyone else to catch up. Like he knew I'm a superstar. Just you, you guys you, will get you here eventually. Yeah. Um, but they, so like when they were filming the first thing, they, no one knew who they were. They're filming in LA. It was supposed to take place in LA. They ended up getting a new writer, and he's like, nah, this is an LA movie. And he actually had a cool comment where he's like, I wanted to be like LA street culture because this guy was from LA. And he's like, that's why I wanted Asian people in it, and I wanted Mexican people in it, and I wanted black people in it, and I wanted white people in it. And he's like, nowadays we'd get accused of like Token. doing that yeah, for purpose, like to yeah. fill in quotas. He's like, but yeah. that was just the reality. That right. was what happened in my neighborhood. We had these guys and this guys. We had these. I think he, he gave this all car, like, this guy. This he's thing, like, we had this yeah. white kid from East Los. We had this kid from this place. Like all these terms I didn't know. Yeah, but I thought that was very cool. But the the coolest thing I, what I saw was Vin Diesel talking about him and Paul Walker going to an illegal street race because like they were so. Anonymous, I just could. You could yeah. just go to an illegal street race. Yeah. And they was out there and he's like, he's like, and then like the fucking helicopters came and I was like, I Vin, Vin was like, I was I was a bouncer in New York at the time. And I was like, I don't ever see police helicopters. So him and Paul Walker started like out. running down the highway. <laughs> he's like, and we're just getting chased by a fucking police helicopter. He's like, and that was Some our grand theft like, auto. From shit. there, we're like, all right, we are brothers, we're like, family. Yeah. And he actually, yeah. Vin was like, Vin was like, I came into it with a blonde haired, blue eyed twin brother named Paul. So it wasn't that hard for me to be like, yo, family. We're, we're yeah. family. We're good. Wow. And the one of the other cool things he's like, he's talking about how they went down to. And then they, you they look at this fucking they, guy <laughs> beaming about this. <laughs> they got a call where they were like, they're like, the movie's getting pushed back from March to June. And they're like, oh, what the fuck, man? We want to watch it now. And the studio's are like, no, you goddamn idiots. Like, it's a very good thing. Like, this is going to be oh, our oh, summer like blockbuster. blockbuster. <laughs> they're like, no, we want to watch it in March, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, so Mindy's like, so me and Paul had to go down to spring break, MTV spring break. Like, that's how old this movie is. Like, yeah, this, this they were saga still doing is. MTV. He's like, wow. we had to go down to MTV spring break and promote it and he's like he's like and we're sitting on the floor of an airport in Mexico and people are just stepping over us right and no he's idea. like he's like and I hit Paul and I was like soak this in because this is the last time ever this is the last time we <sighs> ever own our own anonymity ever again and like he was right about that. That's so cool. <laughs> part of me part of me feels like when that happens that's when you get like fucked up when you go from like 0 to 100 and you don't you're not ready for it, your family's not ready for it, your whole life changes, you fuck it all up. Like I feel like it's a better like slow ascent. But if you if it does happen that way and you're cocky enough to know it and you have that moment, yeah. you're like, you're never, no one's ever gonna step over me ever a fucking again. <laughs> yeah. by, you know, two weeks from now, you know, uh, that's a, that's got to be a very cool moment. It's, the it's, one, it's one also that like I, a very one depressing one. Never, like, like like we're never gonna own our own anonymity. Yeah, ever we'll never we'll never be our yeah alone. Uh, you know, like, that's the but depressing. but if you are the type of guy who is so confident that when you walk into auditions and shit, when you it was probably a good moment for him where he's oh, like, I yeah. can't wait to never be anonymous <laughs> again. Whereas he, uh, I can't even imagine having that confidence, that 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 cocky swagger to be like, this is it. But you know what sucks? When he's like, awful, awful, that, awful. That, that Paul Walker died in a fiery car crash. <laughs> That's one. Yeah. The, but that the original writer of like. Tell me he's one of these guys who got like cut out of it. He didn't get cut. He, he was like, do it. he's like, he, I, he's, he's involved in this. He's like, I don't even, like, he said something like, I don't even think I really got fucked. It was just like. No one knew what this was gonna be, so I didn't ask for points on the back end. I didn't ask for shit like this. And he's, that's us, man. So he's just like, he did that one Fast and Furious movie, <laughs> and gets no money for the massive. I mean, it's the most prolific. It's like Star Wars and Fast and the Furious. It's uh, yeah. however how many uh, Harry Potter has like eight. Uh, uh, Star Wars has you know eleven. I mean, Harry, Harry Potter's got. Ten now with well, the, yeah, but the, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, so yeah. also, if you include Calvin Hobbes in that, 
There's, there's ten <laughs> or eleven. Hobbs and Shaw. But, Show the respect it deserves. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. It, it's diff. I, I I separate them as well. They're different. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're the very different. The nobody like even the, the Harry Potter's Potter spinoffs are not. People don't really like yeah. them. They're not that good. But uh, and and what is it like? I think Fast Three people are like we don't count that one or something like that. There's um, one that we're like we pretend it didn't happen, right? Uh, well, Tokyo because it didn't have like Paul Walker or something, right? Didn't have Paul Walker or Vin Diesel, right? So that doesn't count. So and I then they came back around for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I personally don't count that one. So what happened was Fast One happened, and then Vin Diesel was like, "I don't want to make a sequel." He's like, "He's like, this is sick. This yeah. is like what Stand we did here." It, yeah. They say like when they walked out, they they always do it. every That's premiere. It's pretty funny to treat that movie like you know. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> I mean, it's like, like it, come on. He's dude. like, look, it's an awesome. It's like we're not talking about doing a fucking sequel to Schindler's List here, all right? <laughs> but the, I guess they always do it. Every premiere is done at this little, like, I don't know, outside LA, like where the street car, street like car racing culture is alive. It's always done at their theater, and that's where they did the opening one, and they just kind of it's their good luck one. Yeah, and then they walked out and like. Like all like the the vatos and shit are like they're like racing their cars going nuts and Vin was like this is something special it's already something special and he's like I just want just wanted to move on from it so he did Triple X okay and then and Paul Walker did Too Fast Too Furious and then they were both gone for Tokyo Drift although Vin has a little appearance at the end excuse me and then they all came back after that yeah. Amazing. After that, they brought the bag. I'm assuming. I was going to say, yeah. When you when you can pay Ludacris and Tyrese <laughs> and Dom and this and that. I mean, yeah. The I mean, they like money rolled. They out. make like a billion dollars. They're yeah. they're massive here. And those guys probably have equity and points and shit, right? The, oh, the I mean, guys, Diesel yeah. definitely does. I'm sure Paul Walker's family does. Yeah. I, I'm I'm sure I, I would get that. You want to hear something pretty morbid? One of the best things for that franchise, business wise. Might have been Paul Walker. Dying. No, it was no. I completely disagree with that because it was I, already well on its way. Sure, but I mean, I think that the song and the the culture and the family, it almost like art imitated life. It like became. Like, I don't. I think because it was Fast Five set it off again. They came back. They all came back for four. No, I'm not four, saying. I'm not saying it made it. I'm just saying it made it that much more. Yeah, so, like, I, I, movie, I like, the, like they, you know, the movie itself. They had to like write it into it, and they had the song and the moment. It was like I'm not saying it didn't have. It, an it made me like take note. Of, like I would never have even cared of anything about Fast and Furious ever, but that almost like brought it to uh, you know. You took note of it even if you knew the movies or not. You know. Yeah, it, it had, I had everything has an effect. It had an effect, no doubt. But like Fast Five was a monster because mon that was that was when the Rock came. Mm -hmm. The Rock didn't come before. The Rock came for five. And that still want to get like, get to the bottom of the Rock and Vin Diesel. The only person in the world who has the the balls to be like fuck Dwayne Johnson I, like, is Vin Diesel. He says he says he was a, a, a punk on set. Yeah, I so mean they they did a well. whole movie together without ever shooting a, a scene, scene together. That's awesome. And That's also awesome. The, the Fast and Furious stuff where they fucking since they're all such A list actors, where they have to do math, where producers have to do math, producers and directors have to do math for fight scenes. Like, oh, yeah, you have to hit the same amount of time and if, shit. If you go back and watch yeah. the movies, no one clearly no one ever, ever wins, wins a fight. So ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. well, that's why they're all superstars. <laughs> like, and, and here's, here's they, my question. They have to go Are, A for A in the sense that, like, if he gets put through a table, yeah. I have to put him through a table. Like, it, we, I have to get up and put him through a wall. He gets to put me through a wall. Like, it's all A for A. Are they going to space? Yes, they go to space in the preview, in the trailer. Well, they're, like, in a flying car, but you don't see them, like, leave it's the atmosphere. It's a flying car with rockets. And they have, like, helmets on and shit. Yeah. But, like, but I feel like they would be pumping it as, like, the one. But I guess they know it's going to sell anyway, so let it be, like, I a little bit of a surprise. I think that's just a little taste. It's yeah. like, hey, if you going put the pieces to together space. here. We're in a flying boat with rocket ships. We go into space. And they're never, they never had anonymity ever again. No. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cinematic greatness. Right up there with uh, mine. I like how you just give it to me. Where you're just like, it's you haven't seen it. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, listen, it, the proof is in the pudding. It's uh, if you get nine fucking movies and two spinoffs, it's what can you tell? Oh, what, what oh can, yeah. Can, by the can, way, what, what can a Fast and Furious hater say? At this we're point? talking talking spinoffs. I, I don't. We've already mentioned the fact that they're doing. There's going to be a, a Paramount Plus show. They have a series coming? Yeah. Oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I believe it's Paramount Plus. There's definitely a series coming. I might I come forget. back around on hating it. Like, all right, that's, that's <laughs> fucking enough. Uh, you're telling me that we're going to get a goddamn Fast and the Furious show before we can get season three of Mindhunter? The, the, uh, the, the fucking the, the TV world needs to, to get their priorities straight, okay?
Uh, all right, so we got Holt McCallany, who uh, is in Mindhunter, and he's in a new movie with Jason Statham. Statham has been in Fast and Furious or no? He was he oh, was, no. he was oh, a cop. Oh, with, he's been in Fast and Furious. With, yeah, many so, many I mean, of them and in the yeah, spinoffs. They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's Shaw and Hobbs We and should Shaw. get Holt in Fast 10. I, he, would, he would fit right in. <laughs> Holt, Holt would fucking run the show. I was going to say, Holt, Holt would come in and be like, Holt's give gonna these be guys the, a fucking lesson on, lesson on acting. Holt's going to be the villain who ends the franchise. Imagine. Uh, in space, he blows them all up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last night was the dozen trivia. Kevin is busy right now, so it's just me and Casey and Jeff. Commissioner Jeff. Commissioner Jeff, obviously. Yep. Uh, yep. Things didn't go great. No. <laughs> it was... Nightmare. No. Uh, <laughs> it was it was sh- that was a this was the toughest one to keep under wraps, um, and we're 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 talking about this on on Thursday, so this still hasn't aired. Like this is this is Tuesday currently when they're listening to this, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. But like we're still like I'm talking I'm talking about it right now. We still have a couple days to wait. So yeah, like, we're, we're like in, we're like Inception timing you right now. But like yeah. Anyway, point is this has been the hardest one to keep under wraps. Why? Because it's, it's just so, so shocking. So happy. It's and so shocking. So mad too, because like I, I've been feeling really bad because the people who are like repping our shirts and being like Team Nightmare all the way, I'm like <laughs> they are gonna be so fucking sad. It's, Casey, will, John, you're gonna get zero shit. Not you're not gonna go. Oh, <laughs> no, because I fucking got the big point at the end. Yeah, you I got did. that shit. We celebrated that did. as if we won this fucking Super Bowl. <laughs> like we really did. Like the the celebration when he said Last Man Standing was incredible. So for those who are, want to watch the rest of the tournament, this is, I don't think, this is the earliest any match ends, like goes final, I think. Like, that's a spoiler, uh, oh, I sort would, of. Oh, no, no, but this, this is the only one that you could classify as a blowout. But it is, ruled. it is, when, when we wrote this match, <laughs> I turned to my, the two people who helped me write all the, all the questions, and I said, this is a hard match. I said unintentionally, this is easily the hardest. Oh, match there we've were written there so were far. two questions where like, there are obviously more than two, but like two that stick out to me were it was like one to nothing smallest after smallest stadium in the Pac-12. I think and so. And then yeah. like smallest stadium in the Big Twelve or something like that. Like I, I was like, I have, I don't, I, I mean, wouldn't even have a prayer on these. But yeah, it was until round four. There wasn't a point scored. The, this is crazy. <laughs> the questions that we got wrong, I came out and asked Dan, because like uh, as a college football guy, college basketball guy, he didn't even know the answer. Yeah, they were hard. And yeah, then, they were really fucking hard. With that Jeff. said, they still scored 14 points. Yeah. <laughs> they still scored, I, I Wait, think... Wait, that was the final, it was 14 14-2. 14 yeah. Well, I was thinking it was 11-2, which doesn't make <laughs> no, it, it was, much no, better. Team, no, it team was, makes it way worse. Yeah. It 11 doesn't sound near as egregious. Shocking. Okay. Shocking. So where do you think... Yeah, well, not where do you think. Where does the commissioner now currently stand... On cheating allegations against Team Night. <laughs> I, I stand very firm that ever since like that first big allegations where I gave cons the ban, uh-huh. I, I don't think anyone's done anything. Now, typically, Casey, you're the one that catches shit. Mm-hmm. And I think people have made up their mind that you have people helping you in your apartment are just gonna always think that. <laughs> like I just I just they're always just gonna think that. And like there's no but cons I, did I enough. Alone. He had a he had a, a tough argument with Brandon that made me kind of skeptical. Uh, in person in the office, and that's why he got banned. He knows it too. Uh, whether he did or not, it, it that was that was karma. It, it, it was the most oh, karma. I've never seen karma <laughs> hit like that Boy. in my life. Boy, did it smack us right in the it fucking was, face! Because I, I I was honestly confident that we were going to go on a good run. Not I thought you guys. I thought you Jeff. guys were Chicago. That's the girl. Like I actually. So I actually got a ton of shit. They're like you knocked Chicago out of the turn. People think I like rigged it against Chicago. I was confident that you or Chicago would make the final. Like like the, even the rest of my team wasn't confident. They were like, why? Like you were like tweeting, like, why is John so confident? You've been right playing now? well because no, I no, woke. No. I've been playing real well. I woke up and I was like, I'm <laughs> feeling fucking dangerous. I got today. a fucking text message in our group text. It's just me, John, and Cons at like 7:45 a.m. John doesn't wake up ever at 745 mm-hmm. and he was like what did you say I'm like the cock of the walk or some bullshit probably I don't remember good like, term. <laughs> nobody knows that term well nobody uses it anymore because it's 2021 but yeah. <laughs> I like that I like that walk today, and he he was so confident that it immediately made me yeah super I, unconfident. I thought you actually were gonna steamroll them 
I did too. Uh, they, I mean, they were they were a very good team. I will no, admit they, that. That like I was, no, they I was, weren't though. I was impressed when Dante Hank had like lasagna. Okay. Well, Hank did. Oh, that's Dante, true. Dante, I already Dante forgot. guessed Texas for country flags. Okay. <laughs> like yeah, let's not was, act like they were just like coming out swinging. Okay. <laughs> it was it was stunning. I was I was and you and I haven't actually watched the whole match since it happened and uh, we're about to start. Like again, this is not in real time. We're like all we're like all over the place. Time we don't know how mad people actually. So yes, are yet. you've watched <laughs> it. You've watched it already. If you're listening, we actually haven't edited it yet, so I haven't rewatched oh, no. it okay. since. As we're standing right now talking on May 13th, I I'm excited to see my facial expressions because I was legitimately floored. I was stunned. Were you were that surprised. I could not believe so it. So that makes so oh, see that's what I'm saying. Like I I still stand by. I still ride with Team Nightmare. Oh, yeah. I still stand by my squad. I still, yeah. I definitely don't think there was any cheating lately. No, there, there definitely wasn't. I, I, I don't know that there was any cheating ever, but lately, I definitely don't think so. I don't know if there was earlier on. I, I don't think so. I, I stand with my, my squad, but. It's just a really bad fault. Look. I'll, I'll say this: yeah. I don't fault anyone who thinks. It. <laughs> no, no, you absolutely <laughs> can't. You can't no. Okay, so here, here's the thing: I we said this going in. So of course, like our three dumbasses, like we're like, oh, how are we going to get ready for the the trivia tournament? We went across the street and just started ripping shots of vodka like complete assholes. Like, so we're sitting there. I'm like, okay. I know we had three drinks. It's not like we came in there stumbling, bumbling. We no, had we all I'm had a beer, a we shot, and a half. Uh, I, I think I yelled at you at one point. You were banging the table too hard. I was like, I, was like, I think that's just, I think that's gonna ruin all the microphones. You probably, probably can't do that. So the the two <laughs> options were, you know, that if we did make it through, that we were gonna play Kirk, which had Rico, because mm -hmm. Rico got dumped because he wouldn't play Khan. Right. That was the big thing. Is that like, was yeah. gonna be great for content. I'm making the argument here, Jeff, that us losing that way is gonna be way better for content. Oh, absolutely! But now we're gonna you get guys, shit on you guys versus Rico. Which, so now that match, I I think airs later in the. I think that that match airs the twentieth. I don't know what it is. It's Misfits versus versus Kirk. So now the Kirk, now the Rico con thing just doesn't happen, right? Which is crazy that Rico in the end avoided it completely. Did you know that John tried to pay Dante to take a fall? I didn't try and pay Dante. Dante asked me for a favor, and I said I'll give it to you if you take a fall tonight. You were going to bring burgers in if you played. If we played Rico, there was talk <laughs> of burgers coming in in the middle of the match. Yeah. Which I would not have had anything to do with because. I, I don't even, I, I don't know what would have happened. It, what it might have happened, might not have happened. It was just, you know, we're just throwing things out. The what could what could happen? How could you get in another team's head, such as texting them the morning of and him saying, hey, can you do me a favor for this thing I'm doing? And I would say, well, yeah, sure, if you don't win tonight. And then we just scored two total points. Yeah, it was two. It was we two. didn't answer one of our own questions right. What do you mean? Like, right? Yeah, I think I think did, you missed. Both of them were on steals, right? No, I think you no, actually you answered your own question in round. Again, I haven't. I oh, haven't the last at one it. was our question. The last one was our question. But the first uh, one was Kate and Leopold. That was yeah. So you missed. So <laughs> that was. So, we didn't even get our own category. So the nine seed Gen X Y Z Large Vibs and Jake Marsh set a record. They hit eleven of their own twelve questions, and you guys set a record. You hit. You missed 11 out of 12. <laughs> you missed your first 11 Tough fucking scene. 11 questions. Now, um, do we know when the next round starts or next season starts? Next season will start. I don't know the exact date because like we we're going to take like two weeks to kind of figure out what we can do to improve it and organize it because this all kind of came together so and uh, one of those things won't be kick out team night really. no you won't be kicked out <laughs> yeah, oh, no. we, we are the you villains have to be in. that was really the whole point of this yeah, yeah. Still yeah. Yeah, no, you <laughs> have to we be have in. to be and not only do we have to be we well, we're going back to the our, our home setups right yeah but i'm gonna make you guys do your next match probably from like the radio room no 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 no, 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 no i think no, you, no. if cons is cheating let him cheat the regular <laughs> season no and let us get to the tournament I, and fail again. i would i know he definitely has some cheated lately at all like he's Standing up in the middle of his apartment. Like, he has yeah. it. I think for your sake, you should do it from the radio room and have a good match. But do people think I'm just, like, living in, like, some sort of brothel at my apartment? People, think you, have somebody, people think you have an earpiece in, so you should probably put your hair back. <laughs> I, uh, an earpiece? Yeah. You, should, you should be given... I don't even know how to make an IFB work from you, my apartment. You should win and squash it quick, and then on the all on the beam is just one very embarrassing match. <laughs> it, it, it was I mean, karma. Whether he cheated or not, and I know people who, who think he did or, like, they scream, because they're like, are you fucking... How do you fucking still say that? Like, I just... I legitimately don't have... 
def- like I just don't have definitive proof. I have some damning evidence based <laughs> on his argument with Brandon right. that just makes him look really bad, and that's why I suspended him. Like I was like, I can't, like I can't not. Sus- like you just, you sound so guilty, whether you know it or not. Like I just had to suspend him, and he accepted it. Like he accepted the suspension. He didn't like complain about it. And he came back and he played. And he he, and he played well. And Cons said, loves playing the dozen. And I appreciate that. Like he loves coming on. He knows he's going to get completely shit on every time. And he keeps playing. So <laughs> he is going to have a tough. Now again, we're it's recording be, this on before it all comes out. Captain Cons, I hope you are not reading your Twitter mentions. I, it, it's it's going like to be when, insane. When John and I walked out, we were just dying laughing because it was so fucking bad. Cons was so rattled, and I was like. Listen, like you just might as well turn your phone off for a day. If you're gonna get rattled yeah, it's now, gonna be, it's like, gonna be ugly. It is. I mean, social media is gonna be tough, and it should be. We were humiliated. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like as I said, I will fault no one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there I mean, is no missed, response you that, that would I be ridiculous. You missed. Like I. I think well, that, well, okay. What can so you? The celeb mashups were definitely the hardest, if I recall. But even yeah. like Maid of Honor, I was shocked. You like Maid of some... Honor? I, I came out. And I think I think Ken Jack was also very surprised. I'd never seen that one. I didn't. I didn't know Maid the, of Honor at all. I'm gonna, I'm the, gonna pull up. No, I, the the smallest basketball arena in the Pac-12. So, I mean, the arena I thing named... I did on purpose. I gave Cons arena. I had to. Like I had to give him arena. Oh. Well, and here's the thing: is I knew TCU for the Big Twelve, and then I was trying to do process of elimination with the Pac-12, and I just forgot about Stanford. Like I said, every other team, and you actually said that you were like yeah, the you, one you, team you, did, you didn't you, mention is the answer, and I was you like, answered, well, fuck. you basically said everybody but the right answer. I'm trying to, pull and I did. The same I thing actually, I also actually, I didn't know Kate and Leopold. I didn't know either of our I knew questions. Kate and Leopold, but I didn't know Maid of Honor, obviously. And what? I, oh, we also we missed the um, what was the bonus round for us? Landlocked bonus round states. was close. Landlocked states, and we yeah. just kept naming states that are not landlocked. No, yeah, no, it was, we only got like it one was, wrong. The description was weird off the top because like we had to kind of redefine because the Great Lakes. It was basically states that don't border an ocean. Oh no! Right. I, late in the match, I was still trying to pull like Alabama, Georgia. Like I was still. Oh, going. you were saying them, but we weren't. Right, we weren't right, putting them right. in. No, we, I think it, I think we went to like triple overtime on that yeah, or something. We did. Like that right. that one went pretty far. Yeah, it was like states that don't border an ocean is what we ended up. We, I said it wrong when we, when we said it, but. The question that we were very sure on was the Rick Porcello one. I oh, I yeah. had never been more confident in you answering that question. Both Rick Porcello and Ari Dickey. I was so you got Kate and Leopold. You got the steel on your knees. Yes. yes. The other side got both music. Oh yeah. We, uh, we fucked they got one both one. music, and then they got uh, what was our music one? I forget what I, it was. I had never one, heard of it. No, I, I knew the song, but I had never heard of the band. Right, right. Yeah. I knew we 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 sang the song. And they got yeah. Italian food, and then they didn't miss one question the rest of the way. They got all the remainder of their own questions, and you guys. By the way, uh, Jeff, I have a you know what, Jeff, I have a bone to pick with you. As a matter of fact, now that you're bringing this up, you let people do niche, niche, whatever categories that were so specific, but you told no. yeah, romantic comedies is pretty no, 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 fucking specific. No, no, you let Roan do battle rap, but that's that's very wide ranging. Not really. I gave you guys I, romantic I comedies from the late 2000s. No, but John or early, wanted, late 90s or 2000s. Like, that's a pretty... I, pretty would, make, I would make the, the argument, though. John wanted to do Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is bigger than battle rap. No, but Taylor Swift's one person. Battle rap is a whole entire, like, thing. But it's a whole thing that no one knows about. No folk knows. music, but that's just Roan knows it. We're, we are changing... The niche up, but that's, like, kind of the I, I see. That I had. see both sides of this. I, I, that's I not the advantage... Made, Coley made this argument, I think, during uh, during their match where he was saying that, uh, like, Simpsons is wider ranging. And you were like, yeah, it, but it's a one single show and it's one single yes. artist. You should so let like, us do however specific I, I, I we see, want. I see. I waver on this one. I, I get both sides of it. No, we should be able to do the most specific things that we want. No, well, that actually is changing. You will next year a little bit. It's Niche categories can be way different. Gotta do success. But you guys Simple were must. very good at. At romantic comedies too, so it's not like it. Well, you weren't yeah. like Hans was studying movie posters the night before. Yeah, <laughs> and we That's still didn't. Maid of it. Honor. I couldn't believe he he missed. He got mm. Kate and Leopold. Yeah, it's. I mean, you guys, you guys ended up getting your last point on uh, Last Man Standing with Tim Allen. Yeah, that was big. That's that was big. that was a fucking good point to get. Just like because we had a good reaction, we were having fun. Well, I, well, we knew how. I mean, it was over way before that, but we also knew that we didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, that be was the calm. very end you of the didn't... match, and it looked like we were dancing on their graves. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't only score one point. I mean, we yeah, just they simply they were just getting. They got movie years. They got sort the flags. They got arenas, and they just got so many things. Yeah, Listen, they it got, was embarrassing. I there's really nothing else to they say. They got sort the flags. I think we got lucky with one. 
because I think we had Nicaragua and like we knew it because it said Nicaragua on the flag. So we just knew where N is probably going to be in the middle. And then we gave two different answers. You got Christina Applegate and, and, and Jason Bateman. It. Yeah, and then the Bateman was a hard one because the Bateman was like it was long it hair, was longer he had hair, another a scruff. That's not the way he looks. It, yes, it is. That that that's, that's I remember him that's looking like that. The rest of the Jason just, Bateman hair. It's just not how I'd ever think of him looking. You missed I, Elizabeth Banks and Colin Firth on the steel. I yeah, who does I said Pierce Morgan on that? Yeah, which Who's I was Colin Firth. Oh, he's in Colin Firth, very famous. And that, I actually, oh my god, I mean, I gave you like a, he's like a rom com guy yeah. in many cases. Yeah, you'll you'll know you'll know who Colin Firth is. It was, I mean. Look, I mean, he's a Mamma Mia guy. We're talking you know? about oh, we're talking yeah, about one well, or yeah, two points here or one. there. You lost by twelve. Yeah, you know, and they actually only they only stole three of the ones you missed. They weren't even like that great on the other side. Uh, it's uh, we did it for content, Jeff. We humiliated <laughs> ourselves for content. Yeah, I mean, that's we took one for the team. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Also, like the fact that Nick made our logos the Astros logos is so it's a, it's, funny. it's a cool logo though and but people mm. like didn't realize that it was the like you didn't realize it did you I didn't realize it until someone said it like to my face might have been you I think it was I was like yeah we, we were wearing the Astros logos because everyone thinks we cheated yeah and the bonus run went to triple overtime and you and you lost the first what we wrong, say? We say the Kentucky first wrong answer like was your answer yeah yeah we went we, we, I think we, you we said somebody answers. I think you said somebody on that was already on the list yeah yeah, I think it was Kentucky and Kentucky was already on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but whatever. It's been a great tournament so far. The I'm fact very that Cons much looking isn't forward here to is damning too. I mean, it's, it's Cons couldn't really. We kind of just did this on a whim. You mentioned I you, was trying to make it seem like he refused to be okay. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Coley. Mm -hmm. Coley takes on uh, the experts next, Brandon, oh. PFT, and Fran. That's going to be on the last the week before Memorial Day, the Monday. And I guess if you're listening at this point, there's a bunch of matches you haven't seen, so. It's uh tune in. It is it is top notch content. It is, congratulations to Jeff. The dozen is awesome. The rest of the show. I think congrats. I think you guys deserve you guys play, played a shitload of times. Like I've been very adamant about that. Like it's I appreciate the praise, but it's been a pretty large team effort here. The face gets the credit. The face is here. And sparklers. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, sparklers <laughs> got me got me shit here, so I don't appreciate <laughs> the fucking sparkler. I mean, you guys. You guys played many times, and you guys. Don't, I don't think you guys ever said no. I I, li I I didn't like when I wasn't asked. I was like, "What the fuck? I wasn't asked this week." Like, <laughs> like I. Well, you'll, I very much. You'll be like one playing. of the first probably four matches in the next season. Absolutely. All from I home, can't Jeff. Wait. All from home. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Guys. You guys winning like fourteen nothing be the funniest fucking thing. In the world. <laughs> so I'm saying, do it for content, Jeff. Let cons cheat for content. <laughs> All right, let's do our top fives. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. Miller Lite is the best beer when you're sitting around debating things with your friends. You got to crack a cold one and argue. I'm going to draft this. You're going to draft that. No, it's a terrible pick. This is funnier. This is better. And Miller Lite enhances all of that. That's honestly. I heard all the all the coaches at the NFL draft were drinking it. That's just what I, I don't know. Coaches, GMs, the whole shebang. I mean, that's just what they do. You're all in the war rooms. Yeah. You're, you're picking out, you know, you're, you're taking your picks. I mean, come on, you saw Sean McVay's. You think he was just. Come on, he's sober he's, there. You think he's drinking some other sort of light beer? For sure not. He's enjoying a delicious, Honestly, the delicious, great taste, thing, less filled. The only thing I need in this world is like dumb hypothetical debates and arguments with beer. Yeah, that plays <laughs> from when you know you're a kid, 21, of course, until you're dead. Uh, and so Miller Lite just makes any of it better when you're sitting at the bar, bantering, bullshitting, laughing, debating with a nice cold Miller Lite. Nothing better. Well, I'll tell you what's better. That you only get 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces of Miller Lite. So it's uh, it's not going to get you fat. It's going to get you happy. It's going to get you buzzed. It's going to make everything that much better. And uh, what's even better than all of that is you can get it delivered right to your door right now. When you go to MillerLite.com slash KFC to find the delivery options near you, it gets sent right to your house. You don't have to see anybody. You don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to be around anybody if you don't want to be. Uh, so either socially or alone, either way, Miller Lite is the best beer because it's brewed in Miller. Uh, it's from the Miller Brewing Company from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Always celebrate responsibly. Today is top five condiments. Number one pick, Kraft Mayo. Oh, you did it. I mean, you went for it, I, huh? I alluded to it. Mayonnaise is the pick. The pick is in. I don't need the full 10 minutes. Mayonnaise, mayonnaise. It is not just a spread for the sandwich. It is a base for a lot of other things. First of all, let me just take you down a little road called chipotle mayo, sriracha mayo, whatever mayo. It's a good base to add some other spices to that all of a sudden you have an entire new spread. Also, let me put you onto something like a little bit of a dip I used to make. I used to make a dip that was a block of cream cheese, a bag of shredded, uh, shredded cheese, a bunch of bacon, 
and mayonnaise. Sounds delicious. Delightful. Delicious. Yeah. Uh, but these are things that you need mayonnaise for. So on top of putting it on your turkey sandwich or your bologna sandwich, ooh, it's not much whiter than that. <laughs> Wonder bread, mayonnaise, bologna. Whitest sandwich on the planet Earth. Um, but as I've learned, I used to think that it was a cultural thing just for the white folks. And as I've learned, there are plenty of people of all of all ethnicities that, that enjoy the, the mayonnaise. Yeah, so. they do it with less uh, gusto than right. They, do. they don't make it like <laughs> you know it, it, you know when they say uh, you know liking mayonnaise is not a personality trait. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to me, uh, it's it's the superior sandwich topping condiment. Okay, so I am. I have an asshole answer that I'm going to give at some oh, point in this show. Just gosh. so you know, you're going to hate it. No okay? fucking kidding. <laughs> but number one, off the rip, I will take hot sauce. Because <laughs> like Hillary Clinton, I keep hot sauce in my bag. You've said that a hundred times <laughs> it, in the last month. It's, it's funny some, how much it's worked its way in. It's For Naturally. some reason, it's just like whenever... I talk about hot sauce, I gotta talk about Hill. Gotta, gotta <laughs> reference Hill Dog. <laughs> like, it just yep. comes out. It is... It's, it's, a, it's a weird... It, it it it's it's very odd how it actually has it's worked its way into like just the standard lexicon now. Yeah, like people, like like hot sauce in my bag swag is like that's the a Hillary thing. Clinton thing. Now, right. It's not a Beyonce. Thing. No, she took it from Bay. Like, yeah, you know? <laughs> like and it was she was mocked at it, and she and it's still mocking. Like obviously, yeah. but it is there's a part of it I think that's more just like. More genuine, not not. I, I it think just, it just happens. I think it it's got out. the Chet Hanks treatment, where it's yeah. not as it's not as hundred percent mocking now. It's like right, we're yeah. kind of laughing with you about just it. Keep you that know? motherfucking thing on me, like Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, my next pick, I'm gonna go with. I haven't given this much thought. I am just letting this fly. <laughs> Top condiments. I'll go two. I'll take my second one right now. Oh, you're gonna snake it? Okay. Yeah, how about that? Because it's unless, no, you, unless you take something that I was gonna take. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I was gonna use the one I hate. Okay, go ahead. Well, no, the one, the one you're gonna hate. Okay. Uh, my number two favorite condiment because a condiment is technically something you just dip things in would be Gatorade. <laughs> and, and what do you dip in Gatorade? Oh, Coach Bill Belichick. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo this man. Throw tomatoes and lettuce at the... Hiss! Hiss! Oh, my God. You don't dip Bill in it. He, you gets, pour it on him. dumped on him, but that's, yeah. you know, like, if you dump mayonnaise on something, guess what? You used it as a, as a condiment. You are. A colossal ass. I mean, you put you fucking soak ketchup, you squirt ketchup onto a burger. That's a yeah, but but it's more like it's more like if you were to put it on the top of the fries. When people just put ketchup on top of their fries, oh yeah, people people with uh, chaotic evil energy. Yeah, that's like you just want to watch the world burn if you spread the ketchup on top of your fries. Uh, All right, I'll go. I mean, I can't believe we're just not taking ketchup too here. I mean. You are? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go ketchup. Because you, you looked like you were giving it more thought. Though. No, no, no. I'll it, go. It's, it's ketchup. It, it's ke- ketchup is the answer. Uh, tried and true. Old faithful. Americana. You need it on your burger. need it on your fries. You don't need it. Uh, again, half of, you know, I have my mayo. Now I have my ketchup. Mix them together. Now I have my Thousand Islands. So, mm-hmm. like, I, you know, you need those two things. To, it's like, you know, mix them up and you create a whole other creation. So uh, mayo uh, or, or ketchup is, while not exactly, it's the safe pick. And that's okay. Yeah, it's, it, it is safe pick. I'm trying to think of something else off I can say. I'm just not going to do it. Um, I will go three. Not what everyone thinks I'm going to say. I'm not going to do what you all think I'm going to do. Say come. Uh, <laughs> I am gonna go pickles. I uh, I'm sorry, relish. Okay. I think relish. All right, I, was, I was about to veto pickles to yeah. be honest. Re- relish when you take when you put relish on it because not enough people would just do like relish at like the cookout kind of deal. Like yeah. it's, it's always it's usually like at uh I want to say the only times I really have relish is at like a ballpark dog. You know what I mean? Like I don't have relish. Oh, very I'm not often. talking about on dog. I'm talking burgers. I know, but I'm but saying. Like, but the only times you really have it is then. You know, it's not. It's not a common. Like not my readily house available. Regularly. Yeah. And but it is one that when you like I get it at Five Guys. Do a little bit five sweet. Guys. It's a little sweet, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That that takes the burger to another level. Mm-hmm. You it you, changes the burger. You completely it's, it's a whole realize. Oh, because like if you just go 
So there is some other condiments that you could just have on some kind of mix of them all, and it all tastes about the same. Right. When you put pickles, uh, relish on it, you know. Yeah. I done did. I done did something different. Yeah. There's and and, and I, I feel like you know I feel like Chicago does it like very often, but most places you break out the relish and it's gonna it's like oh whoa serious cookout. Whoa. Vibe. I am gonna go with the pick of the draft. Old Bay seasoning. Old Bay now is so fire. But you just called it a seasoning. Seasoning is not a condiment. I wouldn't say so. I would say so. Like you like. Like, I put, like, Southwest seasoning on, like, chicken uh, when I cook it sometimes. All right, well, I mean, uh, you know, an Old Bay fucking... Now, I'm sure there is an Old Bay sauce out yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I mean. But if we're going to say Old Bay seasoning, I don't... I, I, I don't, don't think, think I have a problem with any seasoning. If you wanted to take salt, I'd let you take it. Really? I think of a condiment as a, a you know, a, a garnish to your food that enhances it. I mean, you're, f- you're not wrong. I mean, I, I will acknowledge there's obviously a difference... Uh, but so what are you saying? So that then differentiation would have to be that it's like a, a liquid, uh, or or a cream of sorts. Right. Yeah. It can't be like a, uh, a, a crystal goo. type of thing. Yeah, it can't be a crystal. It has to be a goo. Well, can I take an old big cream then? Yeah, I I think they exist. I yeah. think I think there was like I'm sure in fucking Maryland Twitter went nuts one day because it was like ah yeah. oh, the best thing yeah. ever in the world. That's uh, fine. Old Bay. What? According to Wikipedia, a condiment is a spice sauce spice. or a preparation that is That's added that, to the food. Then that that flies. Seasoning is included. I would. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. And I and I think it does fly. Oh, I, I'm, oh. I'm, not, I'm not just giving it to you. I'm agreeing. Yeah. But I think that there are. I think there are people who will also rightfully disagree. Yeah, I, and I, I wouldn't fight you on that, but uh, it's my fucking show. So <laughs> uh, I also think that Old Bay is a thing that is a victim of its own success. It gets so hyped up, yeah, and yeah. you say things like, oh, fucking Maryland. They put it on everything. They don't shut the fuck up about it. But it's fucking fire. And when you get uh, – have you ever had Old Bay Wings? Hype Lounge. Remember that place? Hype Lounge yeah. used to do Old Bay Wings that were out of this fucking world. Only place I've ever had I don't, them. I don't remember. I, I remember it was like a dry lounge. rub or whatever they call it where instead of the buffalo, it was Old Bay. And they were e- – it takes a lot for me to get other wings flavored than buffalo. I usually just get buffalo wings yeah. and the old bay. I did it every fucking time. Man, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stick with the things I use. Yeah, and that's gonna be mustard. Bah! <laughs> like I, I just, I honestly, I, I, I don't I, have I, a soliloquy prepared. To, I, I thought to myself, I can get old bay with the last pick of the draft. I just know you're not gonna think. You're not thinking that. But I want to be tried and true to like I want it to be a higher pick, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I, w- I should have taken mustard. I mean, because mustard, it, you know, because you know why it's a great it's a great bagel spread. That's why. Oh, true. It's a great bagel spread. You right? Your pick, cream cheese. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get you to pick before you could. <laughs> no, tell you no, no. I, as soon as you as soon as that, I was like, oh, I know what that means. Cream cheese, you know, and, and this is going to be highly contested too. I mean, uh, what what else would you call cream cheese if it's not a condiment? A spread, but a spread's a condiment. Oh yeah, no, it's a condiment. Yeah, cream cheese is a condiment. I I would I I'm not going to argue against myself here, but if I were to, I would maybe make the argument that a condiment needs to be squeezed out of a bottle. What do you think about that? You can do that with cream cheese. I've I've squeezed cream cheese out of bottles and boxes and bags plenty of times. You've never got cream cheese out of a bottle. A bottle? A bottle? I'm thinking like a, not a bottle, but it's like a, a canister. So not a bottle. A but but I've squeezed it out of bags. Like a, a plastic cup. Bag? P- cups all the time. I mean, Philadelphia cream cheese just comes in cups. Uh, bags, 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 bags. What? Philadelphia cream cheese, like the full loaf of cream cheese comes in a bag. <gasps> <laughs> oh, like that, that, that silver bag? Yeah. That comes in the brick? Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's that's what we have that in our house. Now. I think like, that's a more of just like a foil cover. It doesn't come in a bag. It comes in a box. But it's you. We pull it open like that. Yeah, and then and you, you kind of just squeeze, squeeze it. Out. Yeah, so, you I almost mean, you cut a corner and squeeze it like it's a bakery yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, cream cheese. Cream cheese is strong. And then I'm gonna go blue cheese. Oh, I didn't think of blue cheese. How did I miss blue cheese. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think of blue cheese that we said cream cheese. I told, I told you I didn't prepare for this. Draft. Th- this whole draft was just us reminding each, each other, other of, of another thing. So wait, <laughs> do I have one more? Uh, I guess I'll go with the Almighty Ranch. You know, Ranch. I was gonna go if I had another pick. I was gonna go Mango Habanero. <laughs> oh wow, you were going deep in your bag there. Yeah, I, I like think I'll that. take if I can't have blue cheese, I will take Ranch. You know, 
I prefer, if I'm eating wings, it's blue cheese. I know that's a big debate. In my mind, it's not. Blue cheese is the answer. But I go, I go to a place called Bar Coastal. Their ranch there is so good that I actually prefer their ranch over their Bar blue Coastal's cheese. Bar Coastal is a chain, right? A chain, like a chain within the city? Or is it just I always see the same Bar Coastal? I, I, the only one I know is on like 78th and 1st. Yeah, I don't think, I feel like there's one... I feel like there's more than one bar, bar coastal. Their wings and their fucking the ranch is fire. amazing. And then they have the uh, they have like the waffle fry to go with it. I get tubs of the ranch from there, and uh, it's not blue cheese, but it it's 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 good. So, ranch final answer. So let us know your top five condiments. What we miss? What what will be wrong? What's now you see your right. definition of a of a condiment? Uh, and I'm sure we can debate this one. Until the cows come home. I almost... Uh, so this is actually... This is where I used to live. I, well, that's why I think you are thinking of it so much. It's like you probably used to see it just all the time. I used to go I used to go there all the time, but I just yeah. could have sworn I've been to it's other It's a good ones. bar. A lot of TVs and does the whole the whole thing is bi-coastal, bar-coastal. Yeah. I, have, I haven't spent much time on the Upper East Side since I lived there yeah. 10 years right. ago. But there... But like... I could have sworn I'd seen them elsewhere. I mean, I, again, I'm probably wrong, it seems, but... Um, I was going to pick an aioli... I like a good aioli, but that's kind of mayo. So kind of mayo, yeah. Just mix that up with some oil. Uh, also left off my list. Oh fuck! Wait, Sp- a very specific one: Chipotle Southwest sauce from Subway. It's one of the greatest condiments. Of really, all time. one of the greatest condiments. Of so okay, all so time. I, I can get specific too because my mango habanero was from Domino's. <laughs> okay, you dip the kickers in there. Yeah, yeah, sir. yeah, but I know what you're talking about. All right, let's do and our voicemail. Feel it stick to yeah, your it's, teeth. It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a thick, thick sugary yeah, sauce. It yeah. is. It is. It's good though. Uh, voicemail today brought to you by Simply Safe. You want to uh, keep your your family safe. You want to keep your belongings safe. If you have to pick one, your family or your belongings, what are you picking? Belongings. Yeah. Well, I just don't live with my family. If I if I live with my family, I would say family. But it is right now. Belongings. Right now, it's belongings. Yeah. Keep keep uh, and what would what would you qualify as your belongings that you want to keep safe? Boy, not much. I not much. You know what? Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I just went instinctively with anti-family, despite yeah. the fact that I very much enjoy my family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't really have belongings, so I'll, I'll just I'll well. just go with uh, no, I'll. In the draft of family versus belongings, I'm just letting the other letting belongings go first, but. <laughs> Second, well, the good news is with Simply Safe, you can keep both safe. With that would be their, the best case. <laughs> that would be an ideal situation with their uh, state-of-the-art alarm system that has the latest technology to keep everything in your home safe. Whether you're talking about burglars or fires or earthquakes or volcanic eruptions or tornadoes or typhoons, um, mudslides, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, shifting in tectonic plates resulting in like a big fissure, syrup factory maple syrup explosion. Maple explosion. That's maple uh, syrup would have been a good condiment. Would have been a great one. Wouldn't mind that at all. And then you got me thinking about all sorts of other like cre- like so- uh, frostings and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, you know, just cake frosting. My and mom's frosting, cake chocolate frosting. sauce. You know, there's a lot. A little uh, cream cheese frosting. Like I can do it with my cream cheese. Make the make the uh, red velvet. Ooh, the red velvet. So good. Red velvet factory explosions. Mm-hmm. Keep you safe from all. Keep you safe from all that with Simply Safe. Go to simplysafe.com slash KFC radio to customize your system and get a free security camera along with a 60 day risk free trial. So you can try it for two months. And if you don't like it and don't feel safe, you can get your money back. No questions asked. Simplysafe.com slash KFC radio. It takes 15, 20 minutes to set up. You get 24 7 security and you can go month to month with your contract. No hoops, no fees, no long term commitments. It's simplysafe.com slash KFC Radio. Voicemails. What do we got, Nick? Hey there. Who's a better athlete? Hockey players or football players? Thanks. That was quick. I, I didn't have my headphones on yet. It was something about hockey players or football players. Hey there. Who's a better athlete? Hockey players or football players? Yeah. Uh, so the question is, just, is simply, who's better athletes, hockey players or football players? Uh you know, football is too much of a specialization. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, 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 like football a, players just a, do their thing. You know, but it's like a wide receiver oftentimes would be super fast, can run, can jump. Uh, but they all are like linemen. Sure, if you look sure. up a lineman's like forty time, like oh Jesus, that's I figured he was much slower Absolutely. than that, despite just considering the fact that he's four hundred pounds. But then, but then you look like a quarterback, where it's like you know they're a great thrower and they're a great athletic at their position, but are they? As like, can they run, jump, and move as gracefully and like quickly and strong as a hockey player? You know that you get into that whole debate. Whereas a hockey player, 
aside from maybe a goalie, uh, they're all doing the same sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Football, you're doing your individual skill. I would say, <laughs> but also, if we're talking about specialized skills, skating is one of them. And, and the hand-eye coordination is out of this fucking world. That, yes, that is true. And, and but like a hockey player, and you see it with a lot of different sports where, like, I always just think when a team shows up to baseball and they show them taking BP, and I'm like, Sidney Crosby can hit home runs? Yeah. What are you talking but about? But sometimes don't hockey players look like total spazzes? Hockey players definitely have, but I think I think less so than football players. Yeah, football like, players. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, like, I, I forget. There was... The worst is soccer players when Neymar was taking those cuts. Remember that? Uh, oh, I'm thinking of throwing first pitches. Oh, but, oh but okay. Yes, okay. But, Neymar uh, taking batting practice was insanity. Sidney Crosby literally hit a home run. Like, just put one insane. deep. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't think Sidney's even ever played baseball. Right. Wooden bat, the whole nine. I, I would guess Pow. he didn't really grow I mean, they have it in Canada, obviously, but I would yeah. guess he didn't really play that much baseball. Right. But, uh, I mean, you're asking someone who had an argument with Jay Cutler that I'm more athletic than Jay Cutler. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We know your answer. I think we know what I'm going to yeah, say yeah. here. Yeah. I still stand by that argument, not the argument uh, as a whole. How about this? How about this for an answer? The average hockey, on average hockey, yes, but the like supreme athlete will be in football. I think that's pretty fair. Like, like, I like, think if you pulled like a high school hockey team versus a high school football team, yeah. the hockey team's more athletic. But like, the, but there's probably like one star on the ho- on the football team that would probably be able to do. Yeah, because also I mean, on a football team you're going to get 40, 50 kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team, you're but I'm like just thinking, something. you know, you hear the stories about the Wolf Forks and these guys who are huge right. but also happen to have hands and they're quick and they can jump and they can dunk and they can. And it's just like, oh fuck. I think I think if you pulled random kids, because again, if we're talking professionals, then it's like. It gets weird like, where it's like they're all yeah. very, 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 very athletic. Right, right. But if you're talking about just like high school kids, I think rather regularly, I, I would put my money, if they did a, a Marty Mush, Deion Sanders type thing, Yeah, I'd put my money on the hockey team. Because hockey, you're going to have like a lot of the strength training of football with a lot of like the agility training of basketball. It's kind of like a little bit of everything. Brendan you know Shan, I, mean? I think it was Brendan Shan, maybe Steve Eisen, one of, the, one of the old 90s Red Wings had a quote where it was like, very over the top, if we're being honest. But I remember I loved it when I was like a high hockey school hockey player. Hockey player. Yeah. And uh, it was like hockey players need to have the agility of a tennis player with the speed of a this, the blank of a that, like a with the power of a this. My, might as well. Uh, and mind you, the entire time we're on uh, blades that are one eighth of an inch thick on the yeah. slipperiest surface in the world or whatever. Right, right, and it's like, right. It's a little dramatic. Right, but, but it's a flex. <laughs> like, is Wayne Gretzky, was he like a great athlete? Was he like shredded and like, could he do other things or was he just a fucking sick hockey player? I would Because he always Gretzky looked kind of goofy to me. Like, but he's probably, all, I mean, like, so here's a good example Patrick Mazika, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my favorite Met. He's got two walk offs. With no hits. It's incredible. Two walk-off RBI, no hit. Uh, every time he gets his shirt ripped off and he looks like me. Was he covered in eggs last night? I think so. In right? the locker room. It I think he must have like hit Yogi. it with eggs. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's a stool. He's awesome. Like, kind of sparked the team. They're on a, they're on a run right now. Um, and no, last night, whatever it was. Last night was one. A couple nights ago was the other. Um, and then... Uh, Fans were trying to like talk shit, like seeing him shirtless, being like, you know, worst athletes in in this in all of sports. And he like is re- he replies with videos of him dunking, <laughs> like he he's a fucking athlete, he's a professional baseball player, you know. So obviously Gretzky being like the greatest hockey player ever, I'm sure is an athlete. I, th- but, I think but within that... within the realm of greatest athlete in a sport, he just never looked. I don't know, maybe it was because he had this like mullet and this Canadian shit or whatever. But he it didn't. I I never think of Gretzky as like this intimidating athlete. I know I'm gonna get crushed for saying that, but you know what I'm saying. No, I, like, I get I get exactly what you're saying, and I think guys have just gotten too gay, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I don't want to fuck you. You can't yeah. be an athlete. <laughs> like <laughs> you gotta have muscles and abs and <laughs> arrows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not what the models I like to look at look right. like. Like, dude, I don't I mean, fuck, like. Yeah, think if, about the dailies of the world. Dude, look at the... fucking Tom Brady, dude. Tom yeah. Brady like doesn't he's not he doesn't have like a fucking. Not, he has muscles on his in body, him. but yeah. like it's not his definition. Then that popcorn like, muscle bullshit. Yes, there are some athletes who look like absolute fucking freaks. Yeah, we have like DK Metcalf or something like that. So but then like the MMA I guys think, are like monsters, you know. But even a lot of MMA guys, they, they get in the ring, and you're like, 
that dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, it's like some a, of them, like some of them are flabby. Yeah. And they're like, some of them are just really skinny. Like, right, right. I think, like, you could just be anything and be right. athletic. And just be, yeah, all that. that if, what you look like in the fucking mirror has nothing, nothing to, do to do with your athleticism. Absolutely. And there and, are guys who are like the fastest guys who can be like, you know, average looking white guys. You can be not. Not defined, but you're strong as long as you're coordinated and we fast We all just fucking quick. grew up rubbing the fucking washboard abs of a G.I. Joe being like, this is what a man looks like. Yeah, that's like. athleticism. Right. No, man, that's what fucking like male model TikTok dancers look like. Right. You know? But yeah, I would take I would take the hockey team in, in a like, you know, seven sport competition every single time. And that's almost strictly because the football team would quit halfway through the basketball game every time. Because playing hockey, playing basketball against hockey players is the worst. They just it's fucking a, like attack you. Absolute nightmare. Yeah, yeah. You're just constantly getting hit, fucking slapped. Like it is, it is. And like I played hockey, and I hated playing basketball with my hockey friends. Yeah. Like, like, like why stop. are we doing this? This yeah. is so stupid. We just keep hitting each other. Like it's none of us know what we're doing. We're yeah. not gonna call fouls because we feel like that's a fucking. Pussy move, right? Like yeah. that, that's that, that we're we're not in, we haven't hit puberty yet, so like we can't <laughs> knock our masculinity already. Right? So like, let's just fucking go play video games or something. This sucks. Well, let's just go play hockey. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do that. <laughs> All right, next. KST fight Zach, Jackie, Nick. What's up? Uh, quick question. So I just saw the clip of fights holding uh, PFT's hair back while he was vomiting and then proceeded to vomit himself in just one of the word is all time great but word is fuck moves. Um so this question is more for KFC because fights I'm hoping that's as word as you've ever done. But uh what's the weirdest thing you ever done while vomiting? All right, Viva Shit. <laughs> you you shot in peace. <sighs> Disaster, man. Uh, the double Barbosa. <laughs> That's where my mind went. Yeah, the double I've Barbosa can kill him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we were both making out. Like, me and like, this girl were both like... Shit face. We were both <laughs> making out, both puking. Like you would kiss, puke, come back? Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. Like we both we both just like found ourselves in the woods puking. Like we left the party. To be, hey, like you, you too? Got, you know, let's, not, let's get in like, we're not, Let's get intimate. Trust me, we're not in the woods, woods but we're yeah. like, you yeah. know, we're a little removed from the party. It's yeah. like both like, Whoa. Yeah. And it's like, oh, hey, girl, how you been? <laughs> <laughs> like on, on a little kiss? Oh, you taste like puke. <laughs> was reaching over, grabbing her ass a little bit. <laughs> we yeah. might as well become romantic right now. Yeah, that's that was. Uh... Nothing more than like trauma bonding, you know? <laughs> we're going to get through this together, girl. I would say that was probably it. I don't right. It wasn't full make You know what is just I, uh, just because I haven't done it in so long, just drink until you puke. What a what a move. <laughs> what a move as a as a, a relative adult human, you know? Like you're in control of yourself. You make your own decisions and you're like, yeah. I'm just gonna poison myself until my body rejects it until the point of like puking. Yeah, I mean And I, and you know what we call that? Fun. That's a good tip. That's a great good night. Time. Memories, man. We uh we used to do case races in college where that was just like it it was Stand, encouraged. Puke and rally. Yeah. Like, it was just yeah. like, hey, if you got to puke, just puke in the yard. Absolutely. Like, and it became like drink till you puke competitions yeah. where like people were projectile vomiting. One of the most fun parties I've ever been. To. <laughs> when you take away the stigma of this is yes, bad, then it's it, okay. It's yeah. great. Then it, it's yeah. okay. It was like the it was part of our like hazing in my frat. It was like the only part I had to take part in. But it was just like the night. Well, I don't think it was initiation or I, I forget what it was to be honest. I, I had to drink until I puked. <laughs> Uh, but it was like you, in order to like leave the house to go to the party, you had to puke. So like, <laughs> and you can't go to the party until, until you, puke. you puke. So like, yeah, that's not flying anymore. So everyone, that's not, that's not happening anymore. <laughs> but like, and like, I like everyone got like a bottle like from there, like big, yeah. So like, it must have been initiation night, whatever. And it was just like, here you go. And I, I, I'm sure you got me a bottle of whiskey or something. And I just drank the whole thing, and was just standing there, like. <laughs> I'm not yeah, like, I don't get my puke, guys. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, right, that's like, badass. <laughs> guess I'm not going to the party, like, you fucking <laughs> pussies. <laughs> like, no one else, like, who, like, none of the other pledges had, like, even gotten through, like, a quarter of their bottle. And I was like, I'm done, and I think I'd like to go to the party, please. I, I, <laughs> I feel like, like the, 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 the president was like, 
Like, like, like he's Luke Skywalker. Like he's the one we've been waiting for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Highlander is here. There can only be one. And then don't get me wrong. I, I was eventually allowed to puked. go. I eventually puked a lot and was yeah. probably the drunkest person at the party because I never puked out that initial bottle of whiskey I had to drink. Right, right. Yeah, they were probably all puking because of like taste and like uh, a gag reflex. You, you needed to get into your system and get into your bloodstream and then your body rejected it with everything else that you drank just a little bit later. Yeah. Don't worry. It, it just take a minute to catch up. Don't worry. <laughs> It was fun though. Like, it, yeah, it was like like everyone was had like a, <laughs> it was fun though. Just man. a trash barrel, like a big one of those big gallon barrels, not like a little barrel. Like everyone just had like just stood there in, in the fucking chapter room, waited. It, it just waited, and I was just like, doesn't look like it's gonna I, happen. I was like, it's not gonna, like this one. You can take it away. Yeah, like, this, <laughs> it's just not gonna happen, guys. I'll, I'll just I'll just jump in the car <sighs> if you don't mind. I'll head to the party. Thank it's you very just much. Just a different time, you know. <laughs> Feels like a different life. Just like yeah. Just drink till you puke. Dude, that wasn't even, like, the thing that people, like, was. that wasn't a bad one. That was, like, because we were, like, in suits and ties. Of course, it was yeah. Like, but, like, there were other bad ones where, like, you had to be, like, sitting around. This wasn't in our fraternities. Like, we heard about other fraternities. We're, like, the, you had to, like, puke on your brother next to you. And then, like, he had to start drinking. And the other guy like, couldn't start drinking. And, like, it was just, like, you'd all sit around, like, covered in I puke. Mean, fuck. Like, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely fucking not. In no world, you could be like, you're going to have no friends for the next four years. And I'd be like, okay. Fine. Uh, I think yeah. you, I forget if you were in diapers or your or tiny be, whiteies or whatever. Like you if were in, being cool and having friends means getting puked on wearing diapers, I don't want friends. Yeah, See and you the, fuck it later. It would be awful for me because guess what? I wouldn't end up puking on the other guy. I'd be like, I'm just going to sit here covered in puke because uh, <laughs> it sucks. Puke would get puked on. Right. Oh my God, that's fucking vile. Yeah, my. I mean, uh, making out with a chick, chitting. Weirdest thing you don't want puking. I'm sure there, you know, there's, I know there are girls who will, will say, uh, sucking a guy's Suck dick. Sucking dick, yeah. yeah. Um, I've seen it. <laughs> um,. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably about the big three. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I wish I had like a different one. I mean, I, actually, that's I a think, pretty good one. I think I think my two are pretty gross. Pretty good one. Yeah, pretty they're they're pretty. Yeah. I, ah, God. I mean, I'm definitely pissed and puke too, but that's not that gross. Like that's whatever. Yeah, it's just getting it all out. Yeah. <laughs> Next up. Yo, what's up? KFC fights Jackie Nick. The rest. I've got a hypothetical for you guys today. Uh, I saw this one on Twitter. Thought you guys could have fun with it. If you didn't have to do any of the essentials for life, but you still could, would you? Uh, for that, we're talking, you know, piss, shit, eat, drink water, whatever. So, yeah, curious to hear your thoughts. If I, so if we didn't have to do any of the essentials to, like, stay alive? I'd probably go breathe. You know what I think about very often? The whole planet. Eight billion people. The vast majority of us, all of us, really, if we don't get air for a very short amount of time, we're dead. Oh, yeah. That's kind of crazy. Like, if you somehow get trapped underwater or the building collapses or something goes wrong, you know, like, I don't know, a couple minutes maybe, max, you're dead. Like, you're like what if, what if, Like, what if a it's super a villain. villain from a different planet came into Earth and just put, like, a fucking hose in the ozone line? Yeah, just pumping CO two in, and every and just everyone asphyxiates. It's a lot of space balls. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I, I was yeah. gonna say I feel yeah. like I was describing a cartoon, but it's also okay. That's fucked up that that just happened then. Because I've seen space balls a handful of times, and I definitely just thought of that because you said space balls like last week. Yeah, yeah. But Incepted like never. It. it was. It's all subconscious. And like yeah. the way subconscious just works just is percolates fucking up later. bizarre. Yeah. Yep. Because I I was thinking I knew I was describing something, but I was picturing it as a cartoon I saw once. So, like, that's fucking weird. Think about it, though, you know? Like, isn't like, that what uh, you just did? Isn't that just, isn't that, doesn't that happen from lack of oxygen? Pro yeah. You, you got to get your like air in yawn, you're yawning. Yeah, I'm thinking about my go. CO2, and I'm fucking, there it goes. That's crazy. The, the, the Ugh, contagious, all you motherfuckers just yawned. Yeah. <laughs> the contagious <laughs> yawn <laughs> is insanity. You're like, your body's like, oh, wait, I need some more oxygen, too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that also. That's one of those things scientists don't know why we do that, but it's, like, very incredibly contagious. I'm fighting it so hard right now. <laughs> this is terrible. The I like, like, eating I like, shitting I like. But, see, I always think with these things, like, if I could take away eating and then I'm, like, and then you're healthy, you know? Yeah, but, like, I mean, no, nah, I, don't, I don't have any interest in that. I mean, you eating. Wait a minute. You notoriously say you don't like eating. 
I don't. You just do it for like survival. I do just do it for survival, but like when I want to eat, I want to eat. Like yeah, to, that's where I'm at. To yeah. get rid of it forever would be, I would regret that. Fuck, in a I don't know. It's something happening now. I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't stop yawning. Um, but the like, a, I guess either a breathing or a piss, maybe. Like I don't, I don't dislike. I mean, I would not. I would rather never shit again. People who like shitting, I, I don't get that. We're like, oh, the like feeling when you like. I feel like we've gotten voicemails before. Like, would you rather come or shit? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. come, come, come for sure. I'd rather do like the. I'd rather have the explosive orgasm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, look, I, I don't, I don't like a shit. I, I haven't shit in three days. It's becoming an issue. Um, the. I'm giving it until tomorrow. It's becoming an issue. <laughs> what like, are you gonna do if you don't tomorrow? You're gonna give yourself like an enema? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat some food Something. that I'm like I'm yeah, like, like this me shit. Yeah. Like we got a problem. I mean like <laughs> I've drink eat, some coffee. I've probably eaten. Let's let's do the math. I've I mean probably, you've had like forty meals. <laughs> I've yeah. had and like I had Mexican food last night. I had uh-huh. Chinese food the night before. I've had two full sandwiches in the last twenty minutes. <laughs> and they were I, like old. I I've had three Big Texas cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yeah. like, yep, yep. like I've eaten. I would the, what the concoction in me should kill me if yeah. it's not if I'm shooting what, it out. Like, why is your body? You know when you drink tons of water and you don't pee and you're like, wow, I was that dehydrated yeah, that my yeah, body yeah. needed all that water. When you don't shit, does that mean your body is using like all of the nutrients from the food, even the bad stuff? I, I guess it. Your body's not. just like, thank God you put something in here. It, like, it's like there's been no nutrients in any of the things I've been eating. Right. So we'll <laughs> like, even use like that the, was the, the, the first the, person the, green, first piece of green I've had. Yeah. Since your Monday. body was probably like, yeah, it's just like a like a rotten piece of lettuce was like finally <laughs> something that isn't fucking drunken noodles or quesadillas with Pablo Crema. What up, hello fresh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think uh, breathing is you know breathing just happens. Uh, again, it's kind of crazy that your lung your lungs just you you're born your lungs never stop working, they never stop. Mm. How many breaths do you think you take in a lifetime? Oh goodness gracious! Google that real quick. I bet you someone's extrapolated that like you breathe this many times in a minute, this many minutes in, on life. Oh, that definitely happened. Um, I would guess you breathe. I, I I would guess I breathe about eighteen times a minute, and then I'm lost after that. I mean, yeah, it's estimated to be 16 per minute. Huh? Uh, extrapolated, it comes down to uh, 672,768,000, roughly. In a, in a lifetime? Yeah. That's Some, actually that's a lot of breaths. I actually thought that, that, that was going to be more. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was going to be lower. 678 Six, million? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and that's for somebody who lives to be 80. I mean, that's, that's uh, yeah, I, I thought we might catch a bill. No, I didn't think so. I thought it was going to be like low 100 millions. Oh, oh, wait, yeah, I'm just bad at math. I thought we were going to catch 100 million. <laughs> wait, no, it's 678 million. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we almost caught a bill. Ha- I mean, more than halfway really, there. But... More than halfway. Round up. Um, yeah, my, my final answer would be you know, bathroom stuff. And that way you don't have to cry about me washing my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Last voicemail today is brought to you by Slick. Slick is the uh, icy, uh, icy slushy alcoholic tube drink. Snack. It's 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 the, amazing. It's the best thing to have on a Saturday, Sunday morning. Maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, depending oh, if you're back in the office. Day. Yeah. You know? But if you Come have on. you have a slick morning. You have a slick ice. I like that. Get slick with it. Have a slick morning. Have, have a slick, slick morning. afternoon. Have a slick evening. It's a nice way to just the freezer pops. That's what it is. Alcohol push. infused freezer pops. You get yourself a nice little the mango Squeeze margarita, the regular margarita. There's... Squeeze them up. Uh, get get a nice little like icy slushy snack, but you also catch a buzz. It's refreshing you. with not enough alcohol to like take. Yeah, and you're you not out. gonna and you're not gonna be like ah, I get taste bad like you're doing a shot or something right. like that. It's it's got the flavoring. You can do like margarita. You can do daiquiri. All the rum drinks, uh, but it also does have the alcohol content in there. So you're gonna get a buzz and you're gonna feel good. And and uh, instead of your your afternoon cocktail, you can have an a- afternoon freezer pop. It is the coolest way to get booze. Get it. It's an icy twist on cocktails and happy hour with 8% alcohol and 100 calories or less. 8% is going to get the job done. Yeah, 8%. But that's what I'm saying. It's not like a mixed drink, right? No, right. Like, but, but it's, it's, you know, it's like two beers. Yeah. You know, like having two beers and one ice pop is, like is pretty drink. awesome. Yeah. So, but, but you, know, you just have one. It's a nice way to wake up and go, all right. Yeah, Something hair of the dog, freezer pop style. Uh, not bad when you're out there on the beach, at the pool, backyard barbecue, maybe on the golf course. You bring a, a cooler with you, keep them frozen. Uh, the pool party is is uh, is you know that much better. You don't need a, a blender. You don't need a bartender. Just open them up, rip the top, 
start squeezing them in, just like when you had an icy or uh, something from the uh, like a snow cone or something from the, the ice cream man, except it's the adult version, the adult beverage version. So go to Slick. Uh, go to slickspiritedice.com. That's S I S L I Q. Slickspiritedice.com. Uh, or you can go to your local Walmart or liquor store. Load up your freezer for the upcoming weekend. Load it up for the summer. Get your slick spirited ice. Scoop up a box. You can get two, 10, 20. Get all the boxes you can and be ready for the summer. Sipping will never be the same with slick spirited ice at Walmart, your local liquor store, or slick spirited ice. Uh, dot com. This ad has been brought to you by 21 Holdings LLC in West Chicago, Illinois. Must be 21 and up uh, to purchase and consume. Please drink responsibly. What's up, guys? I've got an interesting question for y'all. So my sister's getting married next year, and I was invited to be to be a groomsman. Um, I understand it's kind of like a bit of a formality. You always ask the brother. Um, so with that being said. Do I have to go to the bachelor party, which is going to be like a few, I'm going to be out a few grand to hang out with a bunch of dudes that I don't really know. I only know one. Um, am I required to go? Do I, am I out the, the money just to save face? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Diva. I, I've always thought it's weird when the father-in-law and the brother-in-law go on the bachelor party. I so I have a sister who's getting married and I I told her fiance, soon to be husband. I was like, look, just so you know like I, don't have and to come. I, I was like, you don't have to invite me. I will yeah. not feel rude if, if I If you get if, invited, if, will you go? I was invited and now I'm going to go. Yeah. But I was like, just so you know, like if you don't want to invite me, that's completely fine. Also though, I feel like um I feel like uh, bachelor parties have taken a turn. I don't think it's as much like blow and whores anymore. Yeah, it I used to be like that. we're gonna go and fuck women and like cheat on our wives and do cocaine. <laughs> right. And and that was like what a time that was. Yeah. I, I didn't live through that. It wasn't that for me. Uh-huh. Now it's like and then when I started, it was like we're gonna go to Vegas. We're gonna get fucked up. And now it's like I just want to play some golf, golf and like go on yep. the boat and like that's, I don't even want strippers. You that's know? literally exactly what we're doing. We're yeah. going. It's like we're, and we're not going far because again, it's still COVID stuff. So like, yeah. we're just stick, sticking around the Northeast, playing some golf, going out. Which on a is boat. you know probably the mature and better way to do it's it. It's the way better way to do it. Like, yeah. it, it. If I were to get married, like that's how I'd want. It. I would. I'm yeah, like, I don't want the go whole do. thing. Yeah, like, I'll get fucked up on the course. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. like I don't want to go like. Do I that. wonder if that's because people are getting married older or something like that. Like if you if you were getting married when you were twenty four, you might have been like, yeah, I mean, I'm that's true. What do, you, what do you think brought these that? hookers in the ass? <laughs> what, do, what do you think brought <laughs> upon that thing, that change? The, the later in life, getting married? No, no, no. Like, ba- I think I think that's getting it? I think the, getting late. Like, yeah, later. I think uh, women. <laughs> Women have gotten more like rights and more say on what. Go- <laughs> I think it used to be like, "Honey, going away for the weekend with the boys, gonna come in a stripper's ass, and I'll be back to marry you." And she was like, "Okie dokie, husband." Like, I- I'd prefer that not be the case, but I don't have much say in society, so okay. And now I think it's like, oh, I'm afraid of. I think guys are. I mean, I, I got. I'm afraid of. I was always afraid of my like my girlfriend. I feel like guys are afraid to be like, like I feel like going on a bachelor party is like I'm in, I'm already in trouble. You know what I mean? Really? Like, See, I, I've I never like had it. that, but also I actually have not only have ever gone on a bachelor party with a girlfriend. So yeah, but like, so yeah, it's, it's never been a thing. I, I think. think people, are, guys, are a little scared to just run around, and be like, "Yeah, we're just gonna fucking do whatever we want now." <laughs> um, I think a little bit older. I think uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like it is, is funny. the world just getting more mature. I don't know. The, I know, like my dad talks about, like uh, it's not. An uncle is one of you know call him an uncle, but not really an uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of shebang. Yeah. And he talked about like, his first marriage, where like his bachelor party was insane kind of deal. Yeah. And then he got divorced, and later in life got a second marriage, and it was just, like we just rented a sailboat for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. You know, or whatever. I, it was. I mean, I, I, like, yeah. When you when you reach a point where you personally don't want to do those things, but I as I always say, the bachelor party is not really for you; it's for the other guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So if it's like, yeah, I just want to like remember Tony Roma played hide and seek. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I just want to go play capture the flag, and there's some guy who's like, I haven't, my wife hasn't fucked me in five years, <laughs> so, so we're going somewhere and buying horse. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, okay, Steve really needs it, so that's what we're doing. Or, or who knows, ladies? Maybe we just talked about this at our latest monthly meeting, and we're lying, and we say that we go for a nice little relaxing golf weekend, and we're still banging horse. <laughs> it's all just marketing. Who knows? Maybe that's what's going on. But it is weird too, though, when you, I have it on bachelor parties where like. 
you know, but they were bachelor parties we got fucked up on. Like, I don't, I don't think we went to a strip club on either of them. Mm -hmm. We definitely didn't hire a strip club on either of them. Oh no, one of them, one of them, we popped into a strip club like before dinner. We're just like, yeah, just to yeah, say yeah, we did. Yeah, like put your feet on, like, dip like, your toe in the water. Like, okay, yeah. we're in a strip club. Everyone yeah. get the fuck out of here now. Right. Um. Right. And, oh, that's one thing, by the way. I am a, I'm not a fan of the the big dinner. Uh, and bachelor parties. It wasn't like it wasn't that big of a dinner. I it hate was, when it's like the a bunch steakhouse. We we for my bachelor party there was like a I think a steakhouse like a nice Italian restaurant and we just stood them up and they they called a bunch and they're like confirming like eighteen of you guys are coming. I was like yep 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 and then we day partied and it was like nobody wants to stop partying to go to a fucking dinner yeah, and then fall asleep so <laughs> we're standing you up. Uh, but but yeah, I feel like uh, but it's like they were they were weird enough. They were they were the parties were big enough that it was like I mean why is the one guy here. Yeah, like yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. Although, actually, no, no, I gotta take that back. There was one where we were all really close, and it was like, why is the one guy here? And then there was one where, like, there was actually a mix enough of like college friends and friends from work and friends from high school and friends from growing up. Yeah, where it was like everyone didn't really know each other. Right, like, right, they, right, like right. Everyone had like a group of three. Yep, yep. But that way, so like you know, the one or two brothers don't stand out there. Yeah. When everyone's got a group of three, but there was one where it was like eight or ten of us or whatever, and it was like just this one other kid alone. It was like, I mean, he's a nice enough guy, but it's just like this is, which yeah, is why need... that that experience is why I told my sister's fiance like, like, like you don't have to invite me. Right. And then he did, so I'll go. But it was it was like, and I'll be happy to go. But it was just like. It's like I, I, I've been at a party before yeah. where it's weird. That I, I've seen, a guy. you know, I knew I knew a guy in college who like was there with his other family members. I think it was more like cousins and stuff, but it was like it was the type of thing where like you know one dude had a dildo strapped on his head and a stripper was like riding him, and it was like <laughs> that's like you know my baby brother or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I, I think that I think that's weird. I think it gets strange. I think it's equally as weird when the dad and the brother-in-law come and they're like, just want to let you know. Like whatever happens here, you can fuck other chicks and it's okay. You know, I think that's all weird. That, you know what I mean? Insane. Like whatever happens here stays here. Like it's like, yeah, okay, that's like your daughter, dude. Right. What the fuck is going on? So I think that's all bizarre. I think that that should be I, done. I feel like with. I don't believe you in this party's over. Yeah, right. It's I'm, like you I'm say leaving. that until what? What? And then if you were to see me do that, I bet your fucking tune would change. So I think that should not be like the case at all. Like I feel like it shouldn't even be like you don't have to invite me. And then he's like, well, I think I kind of have to do. It should just be like, yeah. It's only friends. Yeah. You know? And then nobody... Completely reasonable. Yeah. So uh, let's get into our interview. We're actually back having guests in person for the first time. And our first one is Holt McCallany, who is uh, Detective uh, Dench? Tench. 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 From uh, Mindhunter. He's in a new movie with Jason Statham. This dude is awesome. He's... he's there. There's a presence to he's, Holt. He's a that, man. That you notice right away. Real quick. I... <laughs> get, so... Oh, the, I knew the, I knew to go in. The hard. first handshake, I, I went fine. The second handshake, we I kind of like missed, and he just like bear pawed me, and I felt like such a pussy. <laughs> like I just didn't get it in there right. And uh, he's a big dude, especially for Hollywood. We're so used to like short guys coming yeah. in. He is broad, and he's got that jaw and that voice, and I'm like, oh dude, shit, and this is a man. And, and Holt is a fan of eye contact. Yeah. Oh, Holt he likes was, eye he contact. He holding me in like a tractor beam, <laughs> yeah. man. But he liked us. We got good feedback afterwards, saying he was both impressed with our interview and Lights, Camera, Barstool, and uh, very, if you're into movies, or I should say film, as he said several times, a lot of uh, references and name drops of a lot of the projects he's been on. He's working with awesome, awesome talent. So a really cool interview about his life and his career. Uh, it's brought to you by Free Fly, one of my favorite clothing brands out there. Free Fly, it's technically for like outdoors uh, activity, a lot of fly fishing and hiking and I don't know, whatever people do outdoors. They got these shirts that are lightweight and moisture wicking with the UPF sun protection and all that. It doesn't hold odor. It's comfortable. You can do all your outdoor activity with that. You know what that also is good for? Indoor activity. <laughs> so I like to pop on the free fly uh, pants that are like uh, kind of comfortable, uh, you know, activity type pants. But I just lounge on my couch. I pop on the uh, the long sleeve tees. I got a Henley. I got the T-shirt. I got the hat. Uh, all made from that type of material. Uh, the shirts are made from soft bamboo. Buttery soft. You think of bamboo, you think of a hard stick Didn't that a panda it eats. Be. It's buttery it's soft, soft. t-shirts. I don't know how that happens, but it feels like a just like a blanket, like like draped over you. Uh, so but a thin blanket. It doesn't yeah, make sense. Yeah, not hot. It's it's it a, a, a really thin pancakes. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. 
your 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 free your flea fly shirt is like a thin pancake on your body. Uh, so whether you're indoor you know or outdoor, from? no. But I like the reference. Okay. It from? I mean, I knew it was a reference by the way you said it. Yeah, it right. It's Talladega Nights. Oh, when they God. try to get to say crepes are good. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, oh, what if we just say they are really thin pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's fucking it, man. That's what they are. All right, all right, fine. Just uh, say they're really sitting there. <laughs> uh, so whether you're outside or at the gym or lounging around the house, the Free Fly bamboo clothing is super comfortable, moisture wicking, won't hold odor, performance gear, and right now you can get 20% off when you go to freeflyapparel.com slash KFC. That's freeflyapparel.com slash KFC. Let's talk to our new friend, Holt. How's How things going today? Um, good. You know, um, you know, you know, you know, crazy because I'm in, I'm in Chicago shooting a series, and uh, so I just, uh, I just, I just got. I live in New York City, but I, I, I'm in Chicago shooting a series, and I came back to, uh, to New York because I'm, 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 I'm renovating a house in New Jersey, and um, Where in Jersey? you know, as soon as I got, I get back to New York. I get a call from David Fincher. Hey, man, I'm in Chicago. Let's have dinner Friday night. And I can't say Let's that. go. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> or it better mean that. <laughs> That's incredible. That's good yeah, news. Well, no, 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 no. It's a, it, li, listen. I, I I don't think it's about mine, Hunter. Damn I it! Think about, oh, man. <laughs> have us to be in in town. So mm. we're gonna we're gonna have dinner. You've been, you've worked with him for a while. Was Fight Club the first time you worked with him? No. Um, uh, my first experience with David was on a film um, called Alien 3. Oh, right, right, With right. Sigourney Weaver, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, which was David's first movie. Oh, wow. And, um, and, then, uh, and then he brought me back for Fight Club. Mm-hmm. And then he brought me back uh, for Mindhunter, of course. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, yeah, so it was like 30 years ago when wow. I first met David, yeah. Alien 3 was 30? No. Alien 3 we Get shot... Out of here. In 1991, oh, so, yeah. 1991. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not, I'm I not was only to... I was I was six years old. You know? <laughs> 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 all right, we got Holt McElhinney McElhin- on the McCallany. show. Uh, McCallany. That's all right. McCallany. Yeah, McCallany? Are we rolling? Sorry, I don't. Sorry. I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, we kind of just we just kind of let it. We just kind of do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, but <laughs> I did feel the need to announce it mm. for when people listen. But uh, so you're you're a New York guy, but you stayed here. You never made the move out west. You lived in New York. No, I um uh, well I always maintained a residence in New York City, but okay. um I uh You've been all I, that, right? I well no I lived in L.A. for uh, well I was bicoastal uh you know for for 20- oh you're an Instagram girl I I, I, I am I am and I wheels have up three million followers no um I uh, I uh, what what happened was you know I knew that I wanted to be. In the television and film business, you know, both my parents had been had been uh, Broadway actors, my, oh, right. so I, I grew up in a family of actors. But, um, um, you know, the realities of of, of Broadway um, had changed a lot. Uh, you know, by the time I got there in the '80s, and they really wanted, you know, to to use uh, film stars in yeah. Broadway shows. <laughs> so you kind of had to be, you know, mm-hmm. successful on the West Coast just so you could come back to the East Coast. So um, um, I went out to L.A. And um, and I started working in films and, and, and television, but I always maintained a residence in New York, and this was always home base for me. Manhattan or where? I live on. I live in Midtown, yeah. Midtown Park. Yeah. Oh, you almost I got too know. specific. Yeah, yeah. Don't know. <laughs> like reveal my address. And then I, uh, yeah, I live in Midtown. You like it? You like New York? Look, I I I, uh, I, I love New York. I was born in New York. Yeah. Um, I lived. That's for how many I years. asked. Do you like it? Though? I was okay. born in New York too, and sometimes I'm like, I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> well. You know, buddy, look, I mean, the truth is, has the city changed a lot since my boyhood in the 70s? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. And are all the changes, changes that I'm happy about? No. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still think it's a very unique city. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's no other city in the United States quite like it. For better or worse. So, And I so, say I want to get out of here, and I never will. I mean, I feel like yeah. I'm just going to be here forever. <laughs> that's, just, that's just how it's going to go. Yeah. Well, and I think the fact that you even maintained a residence, I think there are people who you make it, especially if you're going to go to Hollywood and you go out west and you kind of leave New York behind. But I don't know. I think it says something when you keep keep – you know, home base. You keep a spot here. Well, it was it was tough because you know, look for for two reasons. First of all, because um, 
California is very seductive, mm-hmm. right? You've got the beautiful weather. You've got the sunshine. There's pretty girls everywhere. Mm-hmm. You're you get making, lost in L.A. You're real making quick. deals yeah. for movies yeah. at the studio or you're starring on a yeah. series or whatever it may be, right? right? And, um, you know, yeah, a lot of New York actors go out there and never come back. Right. Um, but, you know, I had family here. I had people here that I cared about. And um, and I want But, you know, you're, then you're maintaining two residences. It's two sets of bills. You pay two <laughs> rents. Yeah, it's not you easy. Have two, it's, and, and, you know, it's it's all right when you're doing well. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, acting is a tough business, and it's a competitive business. And, you know, a, a lot of guys, you know, have lean years. Right, right. And I, I, I certainly flows, right? experienced that. You yeah. know, I mean, things are going great now. Mm-hmm. You know, but that was wasn't always the case. Right. And you know, there 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 are times when you think, you know, how am I gonna how am I gonna make it work? Um and uh but you know I managed to I managed to do it. And then what happens is you get to a certain stage where people know you well enough and you're well enough established that you know you don't have to audition anymore. Right. right. And as a consequence, that's, nice. that's that's the big hurdle. And, yeah. you know, that was David got me over that. Yeah. You know, was it was it? Mindhunter, mm-hmm. you know, um, because, you know, you can be uh, the same actor doing the same job for many, many years. But you have to be in a show, you know, that's really critically acclaimed the mm-hmm. way Mindhunter was, you know, and, and you know, in a commercial success, perhaps not a runaway hit like Stranger Things or something no, like that. But, but, yeah. but, 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 sure. but, a, but right. a film, a film that a, a television show that had an audience, yeah. a loyal audience. Mm-hmm. People really loved the show. And um, I got enough attention uh, because of that performance that now, you know, you know. Now uh, they come to you a little bit. Now they I come was, to me. I was actually yeah. surprised you weren't nominated for an Emmy for season you two. I thought season two hold, to build well, tension. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, look, you know, um, I felt as though uh, we could have gotten more recognition in multiple categories. Mm-hmm. You know, first of all, how about uh, for David Fincher as director mm-hmm. or Eric Messerschmidt uh, for director of photography? Now, he did win an Oscar this year for Mank, which I was thrilled about because he's a wonderful guy and, it is, and a good friend and it couldn't happen to a nicer person. But, you know, I thought we could have been nominated uh, in medi- in Medicare categories, mm-hmm. including production design. You know, it's a period piece. The attention to detail was was so impressive. Incredible. You know, really across the board. I mean, we did get... Uh, so so uh, Cameron Britton, who mm-hmm. played Ed Kemper on the show, mm-hmm. um, was nominated uh, for, for season one. I thought a uh, very well-deserved that nomination. That was when the... Actually, when... So when we... Sorry to interrupt you, but when we... When when uh, quarantine first hit, like hardcore lockdown quarantine, and I went home, and my parents were like, "We've think about getting into TV, which is such an insane <laughs> thing for people this, to this say." Like, thing. we're gonna try television. I was like, "I got a show," so we put on Mindhunter season one, and I watched it alone the first time I ever watched it. And watching that scene with your mother was not easy. Something I really There's- should have predicted was coming. I was like, oh, I completely forgot this was gonna happen, and. Oh, this is going to be awful. Yeah, and it was. You know, you talk about like watching sex scenes with your parents and things like that. You don't really talk about someone killing their mother and having sex with their head with your parents. <laughs> like that, that right. one doesn't just pop up in conversation. Yeah. No, it's no. a heavy fucking show, man. Is, is something Thanks. like that take its toll? We've talked to uh, we talked to Brian Cranston recently about yep. some of the scenes in Breaking Bad where he like I think he said he like cried tears in a certain scene and had to like right. leave it at the set. I mean, you were dealing with some stuff that was heavy material, or is that just, you know, that's well, acting Well, look, you. you know, I mean, you know, you spend a lot of time doing research about these serial killers and about the crimes that you they yourself do it as, as well you have to well yeah. you know you know you know sure because you know you you, you have to know what's going on right. you have to know the, the 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 personal histories of the of the of the criminals and, sure. and what makes them different and how they did what they did because so much of the show hinges upon that right. what are we I doing? mean it, it comes through it too we're doing a, a study yeah. you know what I mean of For incarcerated sure. serial killers For and sure. their psychological underpinnings of sexually motivated homicide so there's a there's and they're all different yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean <laughs> <laughs> He's done his research. Yeah. No, yeah. no, but you, you have yeah. to do it. So, 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 what I came away more was uh, a real respect for the guys. For serial killers, huh? For serial killers, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's a tough job, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, gotta be nasty. You gotta, you know, first you gotta stop. Then you gotta chop up the body. <laughs> you gotta figure you out a way to caught, dispose you of it. Know. You know exactly. You gotta make sure that the uh, the pol- you don't leave any. Uh, it's an underrated job. I feel like <laughs> right. people don't name it atop the list. <laughs> um, no, look for that for, for for the guys in law enforcement who devote yeah, their course. lives. You know. Um, 
you know, uh, to to well, uh, to homicide detectives generally, but 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 definitely, you know, the guys who go after those, uh, the the you know the the the, the monsters. The, yeah, because mm-hmm. because they have to become obsessed with them and mm-hmm. their and the crimes that they committed, and they're always thinking about it, and they're always poring over crime scene photographs, and they're always you know you know talking to you know the families of victims and trying to uh, you know uh, imagine you know the the, the 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 what the killer was thinking at the time that he yeah, committed you gotta this become crime. you, you got to really yeah. immerse yourself in that stuff all the time, mm-hmm. and you take it home with you, and you pay a price for that. I think you know it, with your in your family. Family life and yeah, yeah. you know and emotionally and and and, and, yeah, and when, even when, physically sometimes these guys have nervous breakdowns or they oh, yeah. you know what I mean they when, become when alcoholics. You have the, the daily combo with your wife of like how was work, honey? And it's like, well, let me yeah. tell you. <laughs> right. you know, well, I we think what they do the... is they they don't talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Right, because, right. You know, that has its pitfalls as well, which has its pitfalls and, as yeah. well. Exactly. So then, so but then, you, then it's become such a thing now. Like I had that daily combo with my girlfriend. I'm like, how was work today? She's like, I listen to these podcasts, and then she just tells me about true crime podcast oh like, man that, like, that, that that's obsession <laughs> that obsession true crime and this is different because it's it's true but it's still like a scripted show so it's kind of a little right. hybrid of the two but yeah people can't get enough of that sometimes and and usually uh skews kind of female and but the when when you see people get obsessed with it I'm like what's wrong with you yeah, <laughs> this is crazy uh-huh. you know? why, do you, why do you want to listen uh, to this so much yeah right? yeah but it is it's an infatuation and i think mindhunter did it you know better than anybody uh i mean I'm sure I speak for every single fan when we want more mind hunters. So <laughs> God willing, whatever, you know, holds that up, gets out of the way. Uh, but then you do like so you do a movie like Wrath of Man, mm-hmm. which is still obviously very violent and not exactly like lighthearted, but I imagine it's gotta be a lot more fun per se, doing kind of a Jason Statham, shoot 'em up, you know, revenge action type movie. Well, look, it's a great question. I mean, I had fun on both projects, but for very different reasons. You know, um, it's uh, it's it, it's uh, it's always fun to be uh, uh, with uh, with David Fincher. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, you know, um, he's a really smart guy. You know, really really dark kind of humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, my friend Jonathan Groff, um, uh, who played my partner on the show. Um, who's a, uh, a a really gifted actor and just one of the most genuinely, you know, the nicest guys that you'll ever meet and and uh and 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 we got along uh really well so it was always a pleasure to be around him and it's a it's a pleasure to be um on a show where you really can trust that the level of quality in every department Mm -hmm. is going to be you know at 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 the highest possible standard Mm, right so that yeah and 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 we're always going to do enough coverage Mm-hmm. We're always going to do enough takes. Mm-hmm. The editor is always David's always going to have choices. Right. Do you see what I mean? And yeah. and and you know and and you just know that the show uh, is gonna is gonna look great. And there's a tremendous um, you know uh, sense of you know. Uh, uh, it gives you a lot of a lot of confidence mm-hmm. as an actor, right? When you can when you can believe that. Um, look, you know, I had a lot of fun uh, working uh, for Guy Ritchie, uh, but for for different reasons. You know, um, Guy is a uh, tremendously uh, charismatic person mm-hmm. who um, uh, is also also fun to be around. He's got a kind of an infectious energy, um, a real kind of jovial kind of, you know, you know, jaunty kind of uh, quality um, uh, to his personality. Um, uh, he really shoots from the hip. Mm-hmm. You know, guy, guy, guy works very quickly, you know, uh, fast paced, energetic, you know, and, um, let's it fly, <laughs> let's it fly. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look, sometimes you get, you get great stuff that way. Uh, he had great, uh, Jason was, a, a, a very easy guy to work with, you know, very down to earth, very affable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, we had, uh, really fabulous actors in the supporting roles. So guys like Scott Eastwood, mm-hmm. um, uh, Josh Hartnett, yeah. Josh um, Hartnett, who uh, we, we were talking before, and I was like, he I, he did. I forget what the um, he had the show on Showtime, but he went from you know he was the guy when I was younger, and I was like, oh, I haven't seen Josh Hartnett in a major motion picture in in wow. quite some time. It feels like. Mm-hmm. Well, look, I think you know Josh is uh, is somebody who really cares about the work, and I think that uh, I don't want to speak for him, but just from conversations that I've had with him. 
You know, I think that when, you know, when he was young and they were offering him Superman and Batman and, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't really what, what he wanted to do. Yeah, and, you know, and he's married and to a, and he lives in England and he has a family, um, you know, and he still, you know, he still works all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he, uh. He kind of managed his career on his own terms. Yeah, that's nice very to turn cool. That down, though, Penny yeah. Dreadful was the show. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah I, I remember reading an interview where it was some, basically exactly what he was saying, where it was like, I think it was after Pearl Harbor, and he was like, okay, I just didn't want to be the pretty boy. He's like, yeah. I like, like you said, doing the work. I like the yeah. little something more. Well, let's just let's just say that look, <laughs> you know, anatomy is destiny, <laughs> and 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 Josh <laughs> is uh, one of the most handsome actors yeah. you know, in Hollywood yeah, and sure. you know and that sure. I don't think um, I don't think that's ever going to change <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know the career is is great and everything's going well but I feel like your life story uh, is 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 worth of it, its own movie I mean the, the oh, places nice you've been that. and the upbringing you had and some of the jobs you worked and, right. and all that uh, it's not the normal upbringing I feel like I don't think you know from Ireland to France right. to this school uh, and that school and right. working in the factories and right. all this yeah, crazy yeah. shit uh, to then just end up, you know, uh, also just acting. I feel like it's been a very unique path. I don't know how many other people could have said they've lived the life you've lived. Well, look, it's really nice of you to say that. None of it was planned. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, sure. the, the only thing that was planned uh, was uh, that I knew that I wanted to be an actor, mm, right. you know, and I knew from a very early age. And, um, you know... Uh, I, I had wanted to, my, my parents were actors. Yeah. And, um, is that a lot of pressure? Are they like, was it like you? Well, no, if on you the didn't contrary. Want to be an actor, could no. you have gone? Oh, sure. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Uh, the, you know, it was uh, the, the conflict that I had with them over, this, uh, over this, this particular issue was I wanted to be a child actor. And I uh, basically did not want to go to school. You know, I wanted to get an agent and I wanted to go out. You know, I would watch a lot of films. I would watch uh, television shows. I would see young boys my age. And I would think to myself, well, I could have played that part. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, and um, so, you know, when I started school in Ireland, my father was Irish. My mother was from Omaha, Nebraska. She was uh, Miss Nebraska oh, wow. uh, in the Miss America pageant, you know, and uh, uh, that's uh, how she got into show business. I mean, she was she she came to New York and. Um, um, she was a, a nightclub singer. In those days, there were two big nightclubs, the Copacabana, and there was one that was owned by Barbara Walters' father, Lou Walters, and that was called the Latin Quarter. Okay. Man. And so she started off as a chorus girl, then she became a band singer, then she, you know, you know, became a, a Broadway star and made some films in Hollywood. And my dad uh, came over from Ireland, also became an actor, and then later became a producer, uh, won a Tony Award on Broadway, produced the first Irish play to win a Tony Award. Yeah. You know, so I grew up, um, you know, I was born here, you know, grew up uh, in the theater and, um, you know, and made and my, my, one of my mother's oldest friends was uh, a woman named Neil Adams, who was the first wife of the great American film star, Steve McQueen, oh, you shit. know, and so, so you were around it. It's in your I was blood. around it's, it. You, you know, know and, and, and like, and, 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 you know, like I've always felt that, um, one of the great advantages that a young guy can have is when he has a certainty about what it is that he wants to do with his life. Yeah, yeah. You know, because l when you don't have that, and so many a, people don't have it, and so many people don't have it, and so then you kick around and you're trying a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and right. you're looking to find your niche, and it can be elusive. Yeah, and it can take time. Right, you waste but a lot of years if you're it not. Can, you can yeah. you can waste years of your life trying kind of to find yourself. I didn't have that problem. Right. You know, I knew that you know eventually I was going to be sitting here and having these kinds of interviews with guys like you yeah you know and you know to be honest with you i i really feel like you know the time that it took and it took time you know it took 25 did you ever years. have any doubts for any years no like, Shit, not at all it gonna... was always a question of when are they going to catch up wow. <laughs> when are they going to when, when are, they are they going to finally and 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 I, and I and i knew that they would you know and i'm wow. not trying to sound cocky about it but when you believe in yourself you know, uh, you believe in yourself. Mm. And so it was, it, it, you know, I, I always believed that my success in the entertainment business was a, a, an inevitability. And it was just a question of, am I going to get the opportunities? Shit. You know? And so, and, and, and I think you got to have that mentality. Yeah. Because if you allow yourself um, a way out, 
you'll take it. Yeah, you give yourself an excuse. You give yourself you, a real, you well, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can always do X. Yeah, yeah. You're going to end up doing X. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're because, right. Because, uh, because the acting business is hard, and, um, and you really have to want it, and you really have to work at it. Yeah. You really have to try to grow and improve, and that's the, that's the key to the thing. you got to be a little better this year than you were last year. How do you do that, though? You know, you get uh, better at acting, yeah. Really? Well, look, it's, it's age, you, you, know? you get you 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 get better. I mean, look, if you if you take an actor, for example, like Paul Newman, and you look at uh, early performances of his, like when he played uh, the great uh, middleweight boxer Rocky Graziano in a film like Somebody Up There Likes Me, you know he looks great. Mm -hmm. He was always, uh, you know, you know, he he's as part. handsome as yeah. as my friend Josh Hartnett, right? <laughs> but the acting, he was still very much learning mm. as an actor. And then you contrast that with a performance like the one he gave in The Verdict, for mm. example, near the mm. end of his career. And you see, there's no more sort of stark representation than that right. of a guy who has just learned his craft just figured it out, over yeah. many, many years. And now has a, another good example of that would be a guy like Burt Lancaster. You know, who was always a favorite actor of mine, who was never better than at the end of his career in movies like, uh, oh, Atlantic City, Local Hero. I don't know if you remember any of these films, but no, but that's what you're striving for. Mm -hmm. You know, look, we just had Anthony Hopkins win the Academy Award for Best Actor yeah. at 84 years old right. or whatever I mean, he is, gee, right? That's great. He's another really good example of what I'm talking about, although, you know, some would argue that Tony was always great. I was going to say, Tony's yeah. been doing a little while. <laughs> yeah. Tony's would been in you the game. say this is something that's achieved through reps or through, like, like are you going like are you going home and you're studying something? Or are you just like, I'm going to act and I'm going to be with actors and I'm going right. to learn how they do their right. craft and I'm just going to kind of yeah. just kind of absorb it rather than... Right actually practice it so 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 it's a it's a very simple answer to that question anything that you want to get better at in life there is only one way to accomplish that which is to do it mm -hmm. over and over <laughs> and over mm -hmm. and over again yep. and you will get better mm -hmm. um you know, whether it's sports or whether it's, you know, uh, some kind of intellectual pursuit or whatever, you have to be doing it. And especially like now in a very, um, in a very competitive marketplace, you know, where you're not only competing with actors uh, from the United States, but there Everywhere. are a great many talented actors from the United Kingdom and from Australia and, you know, from, from, from Ireland and Denmark and many other places, right. all of whom you know, are your competition, mm -hmm. you know, so, so, um, and, and, and you think about it, you know, you think about a director and, you know, what are his options? Do, do, you know what I mean? When he's casting a part, you know, he's got a lot of choices. Do, you know what I mean? He doesn't, yeah, yeah. doesn't have to pick you. So, you know, you, you, you have to really be able to go into the room and to show somebody that you're the guy. Look no further. You found the right guy. Mm. I am that guy. You're almost already acting in a way, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'll tell you what, you already convinced me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a ton of pull, but like, I'm like, yeah, give him the part. You got my I, don't, I don't even know what you're trying out for right now, Hope, but you got it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, if you don't believe it, then how are they gonna? That's, you know? that's it. Right. You just expressed, I was a little long winded, <laughs> but you managed to say what I was trying to say Damn. in one sentence. Right, right. You know? That's hard to do. I mean, I say it, but I, I can talk it. I don't know if I can walk it, though, because. You know, a lot of people have a lot of self doubt, and like you said, there's a lot right. of competition. So you have to you have to do the things that are going to allow you to not feel those emotions. Right. And how are and you? That's gonna, the working at it. Right? That's yeah. the working at it. It's right. it's 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 like uh you know uh, like Muhammad Ali used to say right, um I win my fight I win my fights in the in gym, the gym. Mm -hmm. right right, right? Yeah. and at five o'clock in the morning doing my road work. When right. nobody's watching. Right. Do you see what I mean? Yep. All the yep. hard work that I do in preparation so that when fight night comes, I get to dance under those lights. Right, right. It's easy. You, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm ready you know, for it. Yep. Right. I'm re right. You, and you get to feel like you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Why do you deserve to win this battle? I, I think uh -huh. once you believe that, and you really believe it. You're not just right. you're not just trying right. to tell yourself when you right. actually believe it. That's that's what it all That's it. Up. You know, yeah. uh, Lawrence Olivier was an actor that I used to admire greatly when I was a boy. I still do. You know, and he he used to say that acting was ninety percent 
preparation, mm -hmm. and 10% inspiration. Okay. So you have to do everything that you can think of mm -hmm. to right. do to get better. To, and be, and, yeah. and what you know, you know, what can I do to, you know, to to make myself you know more believable as this particular character? So when you do all that work, right, and you land something like Mindhunter, and then it's a success, and then it goes away for whatever this reason is with scheduling and money and Netflix and Fincher and all that. I mean, that's got to suck, right? <laughs> that's got to be a, like, like as an actor on it, you know, I don't know who makes that final call if it's Fincher or the network or whatever the, the problem is. That's just, you got to roll with that punch or is that something you fight for or try to uh, convince people of otherwise or that's just the biz? You know, uh, that it's up to David, you know, yeah. it's what David wants to do. And, and, um, and, and that's I think just that, something you got to respect his way. I'd be like, mm -hmm. no, come on, what no, do I got to no, tell him to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, well, and look, you goal? know, what's the cost? What's the, price? the, 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 um, it all depends on how you choose to look at these things. Mm -hmm. And um, would I have liked to have come back and played uh, uh, Bill Tench um, for a couple more seasons? Sure. Yeah. And if uh, you know, if I ever get that call, um, I'll say yes immediately. Okay. Good. But, <laughs> good, um, good to know. <laughs> but 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 you know, I I uh, I've been in the business long enough um, to know how fortunate I was mm -hmm. to have had that opportunity in the first place. Right, right. And it had a transformational effect on my life and my career. Mm -hmm. I said earlier in this conversation, I don't audition anymore, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, there's a reason that Johnny Depp could live in in Paris or Harrison Ford could live in Mexico, or whatever they want to yeah, do. Yeah, right. It's because they don't have to make themselves available at Warner Brothers and Fox and Paramount. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, uh, right. you know, every week to go into rooms. You know what I mean? And read for directors sure. and casting directors and producers. And 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 there's. I'm not against that process. I think that you know you want to be a good actor, become sure. a good auditioner. Mm. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> because it, right? that's what yeah. you're going to have to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. And uh. Uh. You know. A, a casting director that I I really admired. Um. Uh, early in my career, she said, "The guys who get the parts are the guys who go to school on the material. Mm -hmm. You know. You know. Really Which know what you want to do when yeah. you walk in, uh, walk in that room. So. 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 Yeah. I mean, Mindhunter changed my life. Mm -hmm. Um. And I have a lot of gratitude because of that, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't love to come back and do more. Yeah, <laughs> give me what, uh, give me a give me a percentage in your gut, percentage chance that Mindhunter comes back. Wow. Well, you know, it's so funny because um, I uh, I read a news report recently, uh, an entertainment journalist in in the UK, who said that he who reported that that discussions that had been going on mm -hmm. between David and Netflix about a potential third season. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually, I have the, I'm going to have the opportunity to see David, uh, you know, uh, in a couple of days. So you know, I'm sure the subject will come up, but um, I was on the phone with a great director named Carl Franklin mm -hmm. and uh, Carl Franklin directed uh, four episodes of Mindhunter in the second season and has directed so much film and television. A lot of people remember him from a great movie called One False Move, but he's directed everything. And uh, and he's a friend. And you know, and he said, you know, I I spoke to David about that. He, he didn't seem to think that there was that he you know that there was much to that. So I don't know I don't know what the I don't know what the answer is. Um, but look, you know, um, you know, life goes on. I mean, I I I. Uh, I did this movie that's out right now, Wrath of Man, right, mm -hmm. with which, Jason Statham, which is the number one movie in the country. Not bad. <laughs> you know? And it's shabby. also, it's like, I, I've often described my favorite genre of movie as, like, badass guy who just wanted to be left alone, but you fucked with his family, and now everyone has to die. <laughs> and it's a very specific movie. It basically yeah. means Jason Statham movies. <laughs> and it is, it's you that. know, having seen the trailer, we have, we unfortunately didn't get a spoiler. Uh, a screener, a screener, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, that red band trailer. Is... The red band trailer, like it looks right up my alley. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, well, you know, um, it's a it's a remake of a French film called Le Convoyeur, that starred um, two very well known French actors, Albert Dupontel and uh, uh, Jean Dujardin. And you, pro your some of your listeners probably remember Jean Dujardin because he won the Academy Award for Best Actor for a film called The Artist right. a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in the Jean Dujardin, uh, the Jean Dujardin part, and um, 
Um, uh, Jason Statham is, of course, you know, the, the Albert Dupontel part. And I had really liked the original film. And I had, and, and I really like some of Guy's films. I loved Snatch. Mm-hmm. I loved Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. So um, I was really happy, you know, when they offered me when they offered me the part. And um, uh, you know, and as I said, you know, we had we had a great time. There's a there's a certain kind of um, I don't know kind of camaraderie that exists on guys' sets. I can you know? imagine that. And, a little bit of uh, locker room vibes. Yeah, sort of. a little bit yeah, like yeah, that. Like a yeah. sports team, yeah. 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 And uh and then, you know, and then you add to it, you know, some of these guys, you know, that I that I mentioned, you know, like yeah. like like Eastwood and Hartnett, Jeffrey Donovan. Yeah. You know, it's a bomb squad. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah no good actors, man. Yeah. And uh experienced veteran guys. And then, you know, Jason um is one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Huh. You know? And there's and there's a reason for that. You know, um you know, when I, when I was young, people used to talk about this thing called star quality. Um, and it's something that Jason has. You know, Steve McQueen had it too. Clint Eastwood had it. Mm-hmm. You know, where, you know, they just kind of walk on screen. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And, and they like, evoke whoa. something in you. Yep. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and order, um, yeah. um, you know, it's it's not something that you learn in acting school. No, but you know you, what? You, yeah. got, you, got, you got that as well with like the... The broad shoulders, the voice, the jaw, the, I mean, it's, there's a presence to you, man. And it worked so well on Mindhunter. And, and I mean, I'm sure it, for movies like Fight Club and, and, and Wrath of Man, it, it translates really well. But, you know, that, there's a, you got a vibe to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath of, right, you have just in the voice, everything. Wrath of Man reminds me of, and again, I've just seen the trailer, so I yeah, could no be problem. wrong in this, but The Losers. We're like it is. Right. Kind of I was st- in that one too. As I yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. a, the star-studded cast would just right. like guys. It looks like they're having fun and just. A lot and of and you know it's 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 such an interesting comparison, and no one has made that yet. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but I think it's really uh, I think it's it's a it's a really good analogy. Yeah. You know, um, uh, the losers is a film that had uh, Chris Evans. Who later went on to Heard become, of them. you know, <laughs> Heard of Captain them. Yep. America? <laughs> yep. uh, you know, Il- Idris Elba. You know what I mean? You Jeffrey know, Dean Morgan. I mean, Jeffrey it was, Dean Morgan. Right? Was, Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. You know, yeah. um, right. like like really, uh, and and uh, me and Jason Patrick and mm-hmm. some really good actors. And I think um, Joel Silver produced mm-hmm. it. It was the the biggest producer on Warner Brothers lot, mm-hmm. and I, I think it was something that. Um, they thought could be a franchise, mm-hmm. and um, I kind of liked the movie. And I, I was never I C- love Sylvain it. White, a French director, you know, a uh, uh, lovely guy. Mm-hmm. And um, um, I, I thought the movie was kind of um, unfairly, uh, sort of, you know, dismissed. Uh, by, Look, I love the yeah. smile you have, though. You can tell it's got a place in your heart. By, like this movie, it also was a little early. I feel like you know this that genre and all that kind of stuff is is a. I think it would be a different had it come out. Now, but I think anybody who's watched it is appreciates it. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a good, it's a fun time, and I feel like yeah. Wrath of Man will but be. But we had a good similar. time making yeah. that one yeah. in a similar way to 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 Wrath of Man. You really? Know? Yeah. Well, so one we shot in it. San Juan. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it, it does look awesome, and uh, and God willing, I I hope there is more uh, Mine Hunter to come, and anything else you do, because uh, you know, like I said. You got a vibe to you that I'll always watch. So thank you for the time and thanks for all the movies and TV, man. Oh well, it's a pleasure. And if I could just plug a couple other yeah, sure, uh, absolutely. So you know, um, I've got a film coming out uh, um, next month um, with uh, uh, with a great guy, a, a, a good friend named Liam Neeson. A movie called Heard, the Ice Road. Heard of him as well. You, you're, then, you're, you're working with some like small time indie guys these days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm in an, an extraordinary film uh, with for Guillermo del Toro. Oh, wow. Um, uh, who's uh, one of the great directors of his generation. Yep. His last movie, The Shape of Water, won the Academy Award. And that one stars uh, Bradley Cooper and Jesus Kate Blanchett. <laughs> All great. right, enough, yeah. Jerry. Well, you want to a flex for us right now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. You it anyway, check yeah. those out. Wrath of Man, Ice Road, <laughs> Nightmare <laughs> Alley. Thanks, guys. Oh, Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. Listen, if you made it this far into the video... Which is far. Like, no one ever does that on the internet. Like, it's the end. You made it to the end the of the video. The full fucking video you, you watched did. the whole thing. So if you liked it and you watched the whole thing, why don't you subscribe? It means you like us. Click the subscribe button, because if you don't, I'm going to fucking murder John. And I'm going to like it. Kill him with my bare fucking hands. Yeah. And if you weren't sold on this video, there's plenty more. Watch what's next up, and then subscribe. But just subscribe so I don't have to fucking kill him. Well, I don't know. Do what you want, but subscribe. Probably.